Oh, we in here, y'all. We in here. That's what I'm talking about. What's good, y'all? What's good, y'all? What's good, y'all? What's great? Thank y'all for tuning in to Thursday night episode of Can the Brothers Get a Rap Podcast. We back with episode 41. I can't believe it's episode 41. I'm your host, Ashley Lovechild. I'm joined with my brother from another mother. Blood can make us any closer. One of the best photographers in the world. My brother Santana, say something to the people. What is what it do, y'all? What it do? Appreciate y'all for tuning in, y'all. In in here early, much love. Uh, like my bro said, episode forty one. Man, we got a packed show as always. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get right to it. Let's get it. Little brother, take a swig of this. Of this, you know what I'm saying? Of this alkaline. You know what I'm saying? Gotta get this alkaline together. Mm hmm. <sighs> Cool, refreshing drink. Yo, shout out to the chat. The chat in here thick already. That's what we love to see. Pause. But that's what we love to see. Make sure y'all interact. And y'all, hit that like button. Y'all been hitting that like button on the way in. So dang. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate that love. So continue to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And tell a friend right now to tune in right now. It's the beginning of the show. So make sure you tell a friend right now. You already know. You already, yo, Rowan Jack, you already know that alkaline, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that alkaline ain't going to fix my finger. All right, I feel you. It's all good, you know what I'm saying? I feel you. But I still got to drink it, though, you know? All right, so let's get started, y'all. First question of the night, which is our popular opinion segment. Uh, this segment is brought to you by OUV Records. You see that in the background. Make sure you go to the OUV Instagram where the motto is create, document, and inspire. You can stay in, t- in tune with the latest uh, releases of music and merchandise. All right. So first question of the night. If you're starting an NBA franchise, which team are you going to go with? Number one, Kevin Durant or J. Kidd? Mind you, this is all time. All time, everybody's healthy, okay? So, number one, Kevin Durant and J. Kidd. Team two, Grand Hill, Clay Thompson. Team three, Chris Webber, Dirk Nowinski. I already know I'm going with this one right here. The Chiefs. Going with <laughs> Kevin Durant and J. Kidd. You going Kevin Durant and J. Kidd? Why? And Kevin, uh, Jason, Jason Kidd was a master point guard, like true to the life floor general. And it's mm-hmm. fucking Kevin Durant, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, Can't go wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Kid, Jason Kidd gonna dish him the rock right where he needed, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He just and he, he the song teller, you know what I'm saying? He gonna, he gonna set that tone, so I right. rocks with that. Me personally, you know, I'm going with mine, I'm going with Grand Hill, Clay Thompson. You know what I'm saying? Grand Hill is basically a big point guard who could play anywhere from the one to the four position. He's fast. He's quick. Handles. He can shoot. Lock you up on defense. And you got you pin him up with Clay, somebody who want to hit that outside jumper and got crazy defense. Three and D guy. I'm going with with uh with Grand Hill and Clay to start my franchise. Um, the rest of the world, they went with. Chris Webber and, and Dirk Nowinski at 44%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mad. That's that's a that's a, that's still valid. I mean Chris Webber, low post, the high post, pick and roll, ISO, he giving you work. And same thing with Dirk, but Dirk can hit them threes. So, you know what I'm saying? That's not a that's not a bad, you know, choice to go big, you know, pause with those three, you know, with those two. Uh, as team number three. So I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. All right, so bet. So we're moving on, moving on. Make sure y'all throw your answers in in the chat as well. You know we love that live interaction. I know we got a lot of people that just love to play the back room, you know what I'm saying? Like they waiting for them dubs to hit their lap, you know what I'm saying? Waiting for that girl to walk around the club. But, you know, it's fun for us for y'all to interact as well. And we appreciate y'all, you know, interaction. All right, so next question. I think I think you're gonna get stumped on this one though. I think you're gonna get stumped on this one. I right. most funny movie on this list. All right. So number one, white chicks. 
Number two, Death at a Funeral. This is Martin Chris Rock. Number three, Mo Money. Number four, Hanging with the Homeboys. Mm. It's a tough one right here, kid. It's a tough one. Terry Crews. Rowan, Rowan you're going to stop this, man. You're going to stop, man. You, you, you be killing Terry Crews every episode. Damn. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the classic Mo Money, son. You going with Mo Money? Why? I'm going with the classic. Uh, it's just the Wayne's brothers, man. Anytime they together as a family in the movie, because White Chicks was good, too. But this is just the classic early 90s Wayne's brothers just doing their thing. It's just a funny movie, son. Wayne, um, Mo Money was a hilarious, son. classic joke. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going with Mo Money. You know what? I didn't even realize that you had two. You had, you know, the Wayne's brothers in White Chicks and the Wayne's brothers in Mo Money. It's just a different set. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. Me personally, from top to bottom, I love hanging with the homeboys. But I'm gonna go with a death at a funeral. I mean, you got Martin, Chris Rock, you know, uh, I think uh, I, I, I like Tracy Morgan more in shows and movies opposed to his stand ups, if that makes sense. Um, and I think he I think his, his character was a bit over the top, but it was still funny. Danny Glover. I mean, it, it, this goes on and on. Even even Kevin Hart parts was funny in this movie as well. So I'm gonna go with a death at a funeral and shout out to Regina. Regina Hall. Shout out to Regina Hall because she 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 killed me trying to she was trying to smash the whole movie. Like she didn't care about Pops dying and nothing. She was just trying to get us off. Like, you know what I'm saying? She didn't care about what her husband was going through, his stress, like, you know, his anguish and losing his pops. She's just trying to bust one. You know what I'm saying? So which is a real thing. When you when you when you're grieving, something about grieving is just like, you know what I'm saying? It just put people in that mood. So, I don't know. It's it's funny. But I'm a, I went with a death at a funeral. You went with more money. The rest of the world, they went with white chicks at 32%. At 32%. I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? This, this was a top tier category of, of group of funny movies. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you, yeah. could, I don't think you could list a top 50 movie without putting this 50 some of these titles in the top 50 of comedy movies in my opinion mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so all right so we'll move on we'll move on all right check this one out best impressions right jay farrell doing chris tucker godfrey doing steve harvey airy spears doing Shaq, and jamie fox or jamie fox doing uh, Donald Trump. Mm. Let us know what y'all think in the chat. And make sure y'all continue to hit that like button. Uh, uh, though, who was it? Godfrey doing Steve Harvey. Godfrey, Godfrey doing Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. they, on with Jamie Foxx in the chat. Can't be mad at that. Jamie Jamie Foxx doing, uh, doing uh, Donald Trump is classic. It is hilarious. It is hilarious. Like it's it's like tear worthy. Like like Jamie Foxx is a nut. Like people people forget as multi talented as Jamie Foxx is, people forget his foundation is in comedy, and he's a he's a certified nut. Yo, pause. Like so when when he you know does something, he does you know, he does something well. He does it to like the yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah that's a fact. Yeah. And then I and, and then I seen Jay Farrell do Chris Tucker probably like two years ago, and he has him spot on. He has him spot on. It's funny as hell and not mean spirited. Now that's a fact. It, it's just funny, but I'm gonna have to agree with you, bro. I don't think as great as those guys are. I think Godfrey does the Steve Harvey better than the Steve Harvey for real. Like you know, what I mean? like he. Does the subtle the, the the you know the yeah, uh, all the mannerisms of Steve Harvey like yeah the he subtle got that shit down pat son yeah you know what I'm saying like I don't know what you done heard I don't know what you done did like he he just got all all of those 
down pack. So I'm going I'm to have to go with Godfrey as well. The rest of the world went with Godfrey as well at 41%. So it's just too funny. So when yeah. you that shit is just hilarious. Now if it was Jamie Foxx doing like Denzel, I might have had it went with then might have went might have had went with Jamie Foxx doing Denzel. So the time the, the few times he does do Denzel, did, that should be having me crying, son. Did you see when he did Denzel in front of Denzel? Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. Shit oh. was, <laughs> that shit was that shit was off me. <laughs> oh man, with the <laughs> that Denzel laughing, son. Yo, that is yo. Shout out to them impressionists. We need that in the game. We love the versatility. So shout out to all of those great impressionists uh, that that deserves that love. All right, moving on, moving on. All right, which bad guy? In a movie, you rooted for the most. Nino Brown, New Jack City. Alonzo, Training Day. The Joker, Batman Return. I mean, Batman, The Dark Knight. Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on M Street. I already know mine. This is a, this is a, this is a layup for me. I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with Lorenzo, man. He needed to make that meeting with the Russians ASAP. So I was just hoping he could have made it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go with Lorenzo, son. But why? Tell tell us why. Huh? Tell us why you was rooting for him. Because of how diabolical and how fucking calculating and how um maniacal his plan was to come up with that whole shit to pay the Russians. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That whole thought process and planning to make that day go the way it went so he could get the bread to get it to the Russians was fucking crazy, son. Yeah. Just wasn't expecting old Hoyt to be on his Boy Scout <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah. the plan and the execution was like, damn, that shit was that, What a hell of a day, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Damn, you just gave me an idea for something later on in the show. But yeah, yo, Hoyt, Hoyt was... A thorn in his side. Like, once he caught on, it was a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that's a good one. I'm, I'm, the chat is also going... Well, the chat went with the Joker. Um, That's what I'm going with mine, too, bro. I was rooting for the Joker, bro. Like, I mean, I ain't going to hold you. Heath, Le Heath Leather Ledger's version in The Dark Knight was second to none to me. And I found myself rooting for him more than Batman. Mm -hmm. Like I hated the fact that uh that uh one of my favorite actors uh God uh how I forget Morgan Freeman came up with the sonar uh the sonar not the technology but the sonar theory to track him down and all this other stuff. I was really rooting for the Joker hard pause probably more than everybody on this list but Shout out to every everybody was worthy on this list, you know. And I think Nino Brown is probably the most hated bad guy in all movies. But I'm 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 rolling with the chat. I'm going with the Joker as well. Uh the rest of the world, they went with the Joker, Dark Knight at 38%. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, again, tough list, but at the end of the day, you know, um, all of these guys are worthy of that uh uh of that, uh, you know, thing or whatever. All right, so moving on. Best hip-hop logo on this list. Number one, Run DMC. Number two, Death Row Records. Number three, Wu-Tang Clan. Number four, N.W.A. Oh, that's all rip. That's Wu-Tang all, all day. Wu-Tang. You know what I'm saying? Throwing up the woo sign. Throwing up the woo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Throwing up the woo sign, you know what I'm saying? Nah, that shit was like, that was um, too iconic, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, that's, it's just legendary. It's a legendary uh, uh, symbol and shit. So, yeah, I'm definitely going with um, the woo on this one. 
Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to roll with you on this, bro. The Wu-Tang Clan, I, I don't think... I don't, I don't think there's a more universal sign in hip hop than the Wu Tang Clan. Like, I honestly, most people that that heard of the Wu Tang Clan, I don't say most, but I would say there's a a, a, a good portion. I'll say there's twenty percent of the people that will wear a Wu Tang Clan T shirt and never heard a song. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So I I really believe that. I honestly believe all the other logos. You're a fan of hip hop to appreciate being their fan. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When saying Wu Tang is forever, you know what I'm saying? It's it's bigger than it's it has transcended into a logo of people know the logo more than they know uh, the, the 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 logo of Coca Cola or, or, Pep, or Pepsi at this mm-hmm. point. Like Wu Tang Clan logo could sell anything. So I'm gonna go with the Wu Tang Clan. The chat is also going with the Wu Tang Clan. Uh, here go Rowan. Here go Rowan Twelve coming oh, in. in that. Shout out. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Twelve with the mess. Uh, yeah, yo, funny. So I, again, you went with Wu Tang. I went with Wu Tang. The world went with Wu Tang at sixty one percent. Uh. Shout out to Z Man, Cash Rules, everything around me, cream, get the money, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Facts. You already know the time, man. You and you know what's crazy about the Wu Tang clan? I didn't even really appreciate their music until I got older because when they was out, we was young boys. And it was just the feeling of the music that grabbed us that will grab me pause. But I didn't understand the everything that they was talking about. You know what I'm saying? With the with the with the nation. Um, the different mathematics that they was kicking, um, standing on principle at a at a oh, a time way before now, and everything like that. And you had different brothers bringing in like their different, I don't say ideologies, but different way to how to say the slang. You mm-hmm. see, them? They were all trying to be different, but still stand out in their own square. If that makes sense. Yeah. Don't growing up. The only song that was easy to comprehend because it made sense was Ice Cream. Other than that, all the yep. other ones was like too too advanced for me. Like I was yeah. too young to understand what they was rapping about until I got a little bit older. Then like I went back and started listening to it again. But them niggas was rapping too advanced for me and shit. So. Yeah. And plus, we was too young to be listening to them anyway. But you know how it goes. You know what yeah. I mean? That's a fact. We was too listening to. We was too young to be doing majority of the stuff that we was doing so it was just a part of the culture you know what i mean so yes yeah, that's a fact yeah definitely I, i'll say wu-tang best hip-hop logo of all time and shout out to i believe is it master ah, I'm, I'm gonna mess up his name so i'm not gonna say his name the creator of the wu-tang symbol i wish i would ah there's like three names in my head for this dude, but I don't want to say it and be the wrong name. So shout out to the creator of the Wu-Tang logo. Right. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to him. And and crazy enough, at the time, the Wu-Tang logo cost RZA $500. So... That was a lot of money back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's what, I was about to say that. I was about to say that, but go ahead. Yeah, that was a whole that was a whole month's rent right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Back then, yeah, so I, they what came out like what ninety two, ninety three or some shit, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. so five hundred was like, damn, yeah, this thing gonna pay my rent for for May. You feel? Me? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, like so at that time, it's like damn, five hundred, yo, five hundred, bro. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. But throughout time and all the money that they made through the logo, it's like that was a great investment. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, for real. It made you want to go back, be like, yo, it was really 50 cash. You're like, yo, know Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yo, but shout out to shout out to bro. I, I will look it up. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look it up. He's the creator of the Wu Tang logo. Let's look it up. The creator. I want to give him his proper propers.
Ronald Maurice being better known as, as professionally known as mathematics. Okay. A la mathematics. So shout out to mathematics uh, for creating that the most legendary, the biggest and the best hip hop logo that is known to man. You know what I'm saying? I bought a, I got a Wu Tang T-shirt that I probably wore on the show already. So you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Brother Mathematics. All right, moving on to the next segment. Hollywood needs to ask us again. This is a segment created because there's so much trash ass movies out, and Hollywood needs to ask what we need to see because we got the better ideas on what should be in the movie. You want to start this one off? So, um, yeah, what Hollywood needs to ask us, for me, it's going to be a whole theme with this one that segue into our other segments. But this one starts starts it off. So Hollywood needs to make a movie about Prince Hall. Now, Prince Hall was born in 1738 and died in 1807. He's most notably known for founding Prince Hall Freemasonry, which is the oldest african-american masonic order in american land you know what i'm saying so i would love to see a biopic of this man supposedly during the time where we're enslaved this man is roaming around boston and we know how boston give it up mm -hmm. and he find he found a lodge for african-american for african-american masons so that means he can't be the only one that's not enslaved you know what i'm saying correct so, what are we talking about here you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i want to see a movie a documentary or not even a documentary i want to see a series or a movie about prince hall how he came about his upbringing what made him lead to the point of during the civil uh, during the revolutionary war mind you to now come up with um it's like a couple of years after this Revolutionary War supposedly ended, because they say it ended in 1776, supposedly. So 1784, he creates his first lodge. You know what I'm saying? How did he go about doing that? You know what I'm saying? So he was uh, one of the most prominent citizens during the Revolutionary period. He practiced secret rituals and teachings of the Freemasons that's also being used all around the world, where he get that knowledge from. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. suppose when we was growing up, we was we were told we were slaves. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit not adding up. So, I'd love to see this this movie being produced. I, you know what I'm saying? Just make that happen, Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Like, showcase that. You heard? Let me ask you a, a, another question. Why do you think it's important for Hollywood to show that movie? Like, what in the movie would make it important for people to see, like, what would be the message that you would want for them to put in there? Uh, the I want to see the mentality. Like, I want to see what was going around around this person's life to now make him want to create a, a Masonic Hall. You know what I'm saying? What drove him to, to do that? What was his inspirations? What was going on in his life to make him like, you know what? I want to open up a hall. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, why? Because of what we were taught, don't really add up to certain parts of history that you're not going to find in history books, but you're going to find in other parts of history. So mm -hmm. it's not adding up. You know what I'm saying? And we're talking about Boston. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? So very intriguing. Very intriguing when I was looking up his information and stuff and his background and all that. You shout out to Z-Man in the building. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. It helps us with the show. Uh, but that's a dope. That's dope. You know, um, I would like. I would love to see something like that. Um, but they they have to add on why. What what's the importance of having uh, the the Masonic order and and why that is beneficial to our community in particular, not just the mentality. I would love to see on why. The, what would make the difference in the community, mm -hmm. you know, opposed to opposed to it not being in the community. So, right. um, so yeah, I like that, man. That's dope. I like that. I right, so what mine's Hollywood needs to ask us. I want to see the effects of 
TV programming as a movie on the effects of what it does to people, what the effects on the people who curate it, mm -hmm. and the effects on the higher ups, the elites, and their mentality on what people want to see and why they want to see it. And like I always think of the Trading Places movie where you had the um the the, the brothers Mortimer and uh I can't remember the other brother name, but they bet a dollar that they could take like this upstanding man and and turn him basically into a bum and take a bum and turn him into this, you know, upstanding man. Mm -hmm. so, with that with that type of mindset, I would love to see a movie about the the effects of TV programming. Because we basically live in that world today when something's on TV, it's a program. It's program, it has hidden messages that's that's in this movie or in this show that it's telling people to do. Like yeah, it's it's cool to do that. Like like they will have something where you're attracted to like your cousin. You're not supposed to be attracted to your cousin, but they will put that in a show or a movie like that's okay. You mm -hmm. know, they seen their favorite actor do it. So the programming and, and these higher elites feeling like, yo, I could do anything. Yeah, we, we should make this show about cooking. No, let's, let's throw this in there to spice it up. And the effect it has on that. So I would love to see a movie like that. I would love to, my cast, I would start my castle with someone like a Morgan Freeman doing a narration. I would love to have Antoinette uh, Robeson, Lakeith Stanfield, uh, the comedian Godfrey, Samantha Logan, and Merce Martin. I would love for that to be like the the principal cast of the movie. So, uh, yes, 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 Z-Man hit it right on the head. It's uh, Randolph and Mortimer, yes, from... Uh, the trading places, the two brothers that I was talking about, Randolph and Mortimer Duke. Yes, yes, yeah. Shout out to Ace in the building. Shout out to Justin in the building. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was Randolph and Mortimer, and then it was crazy. You had trading places, and then when they had the movie um, coming to America, when they lost it all, uh, Prince Hakeem, when he took Simeon's money, he gave you know, uh, money to Randolph and uh, and Mortimer to get them back on their feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was um that was dope in itself. So. But I would love to see that movie being made with that principal cast. What, what do you think about that? Nah, that's fire. That's that that's dope. Because um, with every innovation, there was always issues. Like when radio first came out, they said that how one of the um one of the programmers was reading from the book uh, Orson, uh, Orson Welles, I think, uh, War of the Worlds. And they just actually thought they was going, they was actually having a war and shit because it was mm -hmm. the first time radio was being used commercially and it was like in every home. And it was like, oh, this is going to be of the devil and it's going to control people. And then when TV first came out, they said the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. With every innovation, like now with internet and AI, and they saying the same shit now. So it's like, it'll be intriguing to see how they put it together in some fashion and form. Yes, that is a is true. Because when you're talking about, oh, you're not supposed to be lusting after your cousin. And the first movie that came to my head, pause, was uh, Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Mm -hmm. um, what you call uh, Monique. Up? Monique. <laughs> Then the same after her cousin and shit, and they have to tell her throughout the whole movie, yo, that's your cousin, yo. Shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, how many times do I tell you that's your cousin? Uh, like, so yeah, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of programming been happening since um TV Yo. Yeah, uh yeah, so like a lot of programming has been going on. That's why they call it television programming. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so it, that, it's a fire movie to see. It's funny. When I, I tell my daughter, I'm like, 
what program are you watching? She was like, that is not a program, it's TV. I said, it's programming, it's programming. You don't even realize that it's programming you how to think, how to be, how to react to certain situations, everything. And, it, you know, it, it, it's something that went over her head for a long time. Uh, Operation Mockingbird. I've never heard of that. Good enough, uh, good enough for Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's very important for, for people to see something like this um, and but make it entertaining. I just don't not just the not just the education behind it, but make it entertaining, make it fun to watch. But we we have to see the effects of this. You know what I'm saying? And make and and be more aware of what we're watching. So uh, that's that's a part of why, part of the reason why I would love to see this movie being made. All right. So moving on, y'all moving on. I right, make sure y'all hit patreon.com. Can the brothers get a rap podcast? Again, that's patreon.com slash can the brothers get a rap podcast. Make sure y'all tap in for merchandise. Also, we're almost near that 5,000 uh, mark as far as subscriptions and su su subscribers for the channel. So make sure y'all continue to subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. And once we hit every thousand that we hit, we, that very next show, we're going to do some free merchandise giveaways so again continue to support us we love y'all for doing so we're going to continue to give you this great content all right so moving on to uh our must see segment was must see movies must hear music and must see shows uh you want to start off or you want me to start off no you can start off all right so my first uh, well my must see movies uh, my first one came out in 1983. It's called Sleepaway Camp, directed by Robert His Hilzik. Robert Hilzik, sorry, Robert Hilzik. Uh, the stars Felicia Rose, Jonathan Treason, Karen Fields, Paul uh, DeAnthony, Mike Keenan, and uh, Miss Catherine. She goes by Miss Catherine. Okay, buy mm -hmm. a dope movie. It's Sleepaway Camp for a reason. It's a horror film, and it's about a young girl going to, to sleepaway camp to learn how to be more so of an introvert, how to really, like, be around her peers. Uh, she's more like a teenager, like a young teen. And, uh, of course, you know, bodies is piling up. She's getting frightened, and you got to see the rest of the movie. Again, it's called Sleepaway Camp. All right, my second movie that's another horror movie. It's called Mikey. Uh, Mikey came out in 1992, directed by Dennis the Mister. Stars Brian uh, Bonzo. Uh, Y'all probably know Brian Bonzo for playing uh, in the Blank Check. He was the star. He was the kid in the Blank Check. Uh, this movie came out the year prior. So Brian Bonzo, John Dyer, Ashley Lawrence, uh, Josie Bassett, and uh, Layman Ward about a young child who loses his parents and um, he keeps going through foster parents or, or, or adopt, adopting, adopted parents. What do they call, what do they call that? Mm -hmm. adoptive. Yeah, adoptive. Mm -hmm. And, um, but these adoptive parents continue to have problems and troubles with him. And you gotta see the rest of the movie. It's, it's actually fire. Um, it's an underlying messages in that movie that is worth watching. So make sure, again, the movie is called Mikey. All right? My last movie, Foolish. Foolish came out in 1993, directed by Dave Myers, stars Eddie Griffin, uh, Master P, Andrew Dice Clay, Clifford Powell, uh, Marla Gibbs, uh, Anthony Johnson, A.J. Johnson, Bill, Bill Duke, and Leah Arshep. Arcella, a fire movie about a comedian trying to make it to the next level. He has a whole bunch of stuff going on in his life, and you gotta see the rest of the movie. It's a, it's actually a fire movie, and you gotta check that out. So my three movies again is Foolish, Mikey, and Sleepaway Camp. Fire, fire movies, fire movies. Little Eddie Griffin been in the movie game for a minute, son. A minute for a minute. Hmm. Hmm. All right, y'all, chat. So you know how I do. I got a theme for all my movies, so ain't nothing new for this for this one. But 
my theme for this movie is fraternity movies hazing edition so each one of these movies is about fraternities and it's not solely based on that but there are going to be scenes in these movies where you're going to be hazed to be part of the fraternity so first movie is called old school classic mm. funny movie came out in 2003 stars will ferrell Luke Wilson, Vince Vaughn, Todd Phillips, Ellen uh, Pompeo, uh, Alicia Cuthart, uh, Jeremy Piven, Juliette Lewis, Sean William Scott. And you're probably asking, like, what hazing movie is this? What hazing scene is there? You got to watch the movie to find out. You know what I'm yeah. So next one is a classic. It's called School Days. Came out in 1988. Stars Spike Lee. Lawrence Fishburne, Jean Carlo Esposito, Samuel as Samuel L. Jackson, Tisha Campbell, Kadeem Hardison, uh, Ossie Davis, and Art Evans. Again, hazing in the movie, but you gotta go see it to find out what happens. Mm -hmm. Last but not least is The Skulls. Came out in 2000. Fire. Stars Paul Walker, Joshua Jackson, Leslie Bibb, Hill Harper, Christopher McDonald, Dominic Kane, uh, Connie uh, Buell, William Peterson, and Kevin Allen. Again, you got to see the movie to see where the hazing comes from. You know what I'm saying? And all these movies have their version of hazing, but you got to see it to, to know what happens. So fraternity movies, hazing edition is old school, school days, and the skulls. Watch the movies and you'll see what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's dope. You know what's interesting? I want to add two things to 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 this. I want to add there was a scene in in Law and Order SVU where they was recruiting this top football player, and um, he comes to the school. He got the cheerleaders walking him around campus um, along with some of the other players. They blindfold him. And he was, he's getting top. So now they take the blindfold off of him. It's a dude. And everybody thought it was the funniest thing. So he runs out the locker room and he goes to a bar. So some somebody, like somebody said something like real light to him, but he took it as somebody was trying to like holler at him, another dude, and he beat this dude. He almost beat him to death. And, you know, it was basically, you know, when they did the, you know, investigation, it's like, yo, why did you do it? It's like, yo, it's a hazing ritual. It's not that big of a deal. But it was a big deal because that person was a homosexual. So they're going to take it some type of way when they think it's the sexiest girl that they've ever seen. Some college chick. We're talking about a high school kid seeing this grown woman thinking she's the sexiest thing in the world. And as they blindfold him and have him laid back, He's thinking it's a girl, but it's it, you know turned out to be a dude, one of the one of the gay cheerleaders. So, you know that. Man, hate I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, "Oh, you ain't trying to come to our school? You yeah. you ain't trying to play for us?" Right. The tape. Show me <laughs> what you did last night. And that's you know that? part of it, right? That was a part of it. It's like, yo, we're gonna pop in the tape, show them what you did, cause they did tape it. So, um, that was a part of it. So, how you gonna go back to your? How you gonna go back to the hood and explain that? You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah. Right, and they know that you feel me. Right, so it, that that was interesting. Uh, Rowan Jack, he's starting already. Talking about eight millimeter. Uh, shout out to Joel, Joel in the building. Shout out to you. Make sure you hit that like button. Oh, uh, well, I can't see no, not no chats. That's weird, but yeah, 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 man, that shit is crazy. So it's like again for the chat, I got some more, some more. Yeah, for y'all, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Well, we're going to move along and shit type shit. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. So, all right. So, moving along um, to our must hear. Must hear. So, my three must hear uh, works of art, which is music. First album by R&B group Ideal. Uh, you got to hear that 1999 album, R&B, self-titled Ideal. Top tier album. Make sure y'all tap into that. My second album, as a must hear, is Aaliyah, One in a Million album that came out in 1996. Another R&B top tier album, songs from front to back that's just fire. 
Um, and third, last but not least, Hip Hop, The Brat, unrestricted album that came out in 2000. is a must-hear album. So make sure, again, y'all tap into The Brat, unrestricted album, uh, Aaliyah, One in a Million album, and Ideal, self-titled album in 1999. Uh, you got a classic show? Classic show. Y'all can catch this on Showtime. Fire show. Uh, only had five seasons, but it was just enough um, to get his point across. Funny as shit, but it's like the underlying tones was definitely there. It's called House of Lies. Came out in 2012. Had five seasons. Stars uh, Donis uh, Leonard Jr., Don Cheadle, uh, Christian Bell, uh, Don Olivier. Josh Lawson, Ben Schwartz, Glenn Turman, Ryan Gall, uh, Genevieve uh, Angelson, Richard Chief, Greg Germain, and Griffin Donnie. It's about, um, so Don Chino plays a fast-talking consultant named Marty Kahn, and he charms his, uh, his unexpected, he charms unexpected corporate fat cast into closing deals with him and his firm while they're making a fortune off, off, off their services. And you got to watch the series to find out what happens. Fire, fire. Uh, throughout the whole series, you don't really actually know what these consultants actually do. You know what I'm saying? That's the ill part about it. That's the gist. As a viewer watching it, you know that these niggas just be making the shit up as they go along. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, these top upper echelon people who running these Fortune 500 companies just fall for the okie doke. So yeah. it's just great to see how they placate it every time he gets uh, sent to go help and acquire a company or help them with acquisition or help them um, uh, bring their company like to fruition and stuff. They call him and he goes in there, says a whole bunch of nothing, whole lot of word salad, but it sounds good to them niggas. They sign the contract and he walk away with a nice fat check. So it's it's a fire, fire show to watch. It's called House of Lies. It's on Showtime. Got five seasons. And I feel as though it's one of Don Cheadle's best work other than Black Monday, which is another show on show, Showtime. But this one got comedy on it. Fucking hilarious. You got to see this show. It's called House of Lies. Uh, five seasons. You won't be disappointed. And you'll enjoy that show. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Make sure y'all tap into House of Lies. Uh, my classic show is a stand-up. It's, it's considered a show. So it's a stand-up. Uh, it's, it's a must-see. And I think this is his best stand-up. Dave Chappelle, for what it's worth. Mm. And I watch religiously probably like once every like four months excellent stand-up this is one he did in san francisco and this this one is just hilarious and i again like i said i think it's his best one again it's called for what it's worth so make sure you tap into dave Chappelle for what it's worth stand-up series um and that that came out in 2004 so that came out 20 years ago so it's been a while but i think that's the best one though i think that's his best one uh you got cologne for us Definitely got some smell good. You know what I'm saying? You look good. You feel good. You dress good. You got to smell good. So for this week, you got to get you a bottle of Blue Atlas. The scent is called Atlantis. Fire, fire scent. You're going to smell good. And, of course, the ladies, once they smell you, they're going to be up on you. So you got to mm -hmm. get you a bottle of Blue Atlas. Atlantis is the scent. You look good. You feel good. You smell good. You're going to do good. So once again, Blue Atlas, the scent is called Atlantis. Yeah, make sure y'all get that so you can get right. Uh, Santana, have you been watching Shogun on Hulu? Oh, most definitely. I can't see the, I can't see y'all chat for some reason, so I don't know what's popping, what y'all saying. But yeah, I'm on, I'm on Shogun for sure. That's just phenomenal. For chat, if y'all get a chance, find out if they cancel the second season. I heard that's what happened, but. That would be in a, an egregious mistake if they did that because the amount of cinematography and how that shit looks right now is fucking amazing 
for them to cancel it. And it's not even through the first season yet. It's just an egregious work, like just just nasty work. But for right now, this shit is dope. So this shit is dope. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching that right now for sure. All right, shout out to Rashida in the building. Peace. Thank you for tapping in. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, all right, so uh, we're moving on to the time to rap. It's time to rap. You know what I'm saying? It's time to rap. Can the brothers get a rap? Brothers uh, get a rap. You know what I'm saying? This segment is brought to you by Button Snaps, uh, where you can get classic movies, documentaries, and shows, as well as originals for only $4.99. All right, first thing, first thing on can a, can a time the rap segment. Chicago, there's a video of a Chicago Uber driver when he picks up a young lady. As soon as he she gets in the in the in the car, she's like, "Drop off, drop off," and he's like, "What's going on?" He he's obviously scared, and bullets start flying. So he obviously obviously then he drives off. You know, it, it hit his car, but luckily. He wasn't shot, and she wasn't shot. Um, like, what do you think about that? Like, in itself, uh, it goes back to your point of like when you was mentioning about uh, Hollywood need to ask us about a show or a movie, and you mentioned about television, right? So why I say that is we don't control our own imagery, right? So whatever imagery of us is controlled by them, and they put it out there. So when you see something like that, you just see how um, as soon as she gets in the car, she immediately ducked down. Mm -hmm. So she already knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. right? So she had no problem putting somebody else's life on the line. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm mm -hmm. And when she's in the car, I bet you she was texting Buddy like, oh, I, whatever she was texting him because she wasn't calling the police or nothing like that. And then as soon as he, um, soon as he gets in the car, uh, she's telling the guy to drive off, and he's an older gentleman, so he's not used to bullet, bullets flying damn near grazing his forehead. You know what I'm saying? Be everywhere. He, he ain't about that adrenaline rush and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So he don't know what's really going on, and the fact of the matter that she was so uh, willing to put somebody else's life on the line. It's just so egregious and just, like I said, like we don't control our imagery. So anybody else outside of what's going on, look at that and just, it will just think the worst of her and unfortunately the worst of majority of us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I hope police is on that ass. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you either you put pressure on her to give up the shooter, mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying? Most definitely you will. But she also has to get charges pressed on her for whatever charges, son, because there's no way in hell you could just get away with that by um, actually almost getting somebody else murdered. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a slight attempted murder type shit. You know what I'm saying? It, it, so, it's the attempted murder. My thing is, like, it's just the energy and just the, the uh, audacity of, like, knowing you're going to get away with it. And it's like, that shit is not fair. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The old man was just trying to get his little dollars up. You know what I'm saying? Taking your funky ass back to the crib or wherever the fuck you was going. Mm -hmm. And you setting this dude up. You probably were saying, buddy, like, oh, my man about to come pick me up. So he go up and he go up and grab the 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 jump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the she get in the car mm -hmm. and he not putting two and two together because she get in the back seat. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He ain't getting the front passenger seat. She got in the back seat, but he ain't care. He's just up up the gun to start shooting mm -hmm. so like the fact that you know buddy was gonna do that and then you still put somebody else in harm's way for some shit you cause there, there gotta be some uh consequences and repercussions for that you know what i'm saying because you you pretty much answered my follow-up question uh and it was gonna be should she face charges and and you answered that because when you because that's a few charges right there we're talking about criminal neg negligence we're talking about uh, attempted murder there's a whole gang of, of charges that she should be responsible for because because she put him in that position. Now, mind you, it's not her fault that, that this person chose to shoot, but you are still responsible because you putting somebody else in a situation 
that didn't belong in that situation. So instead of, instead of having this man that's driving the cab, let's say for instance, there was a child, you know, right, you know, riding their bike outside and they just riding up their bike. And because you have this argument with this dude and he goes into his house and get a gun, that's not necessarily her fault. But when you when you put yourself around other people, like let me go across the street where this little kid is riding his bike because he's not going to shoot at me and this little kid. But he's like, nah, y'all, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let who, I'm gonna let whoever out there have it. And if mm -hmm. it hits, it'll hit you. So what? So you still end up being responsible. So at the end of the day, I, I agree with you. I think she should be brought up on charges because you're putting somebody else's life at risk. Because to keep it all the way real with you, if if that was my father or somebody else's father, and they got that phone call like, yo, daddy dead. And you're like, how? daddy dead? He got shot. He got shot. Like, he drives Uber. How the hell he gets shot? Somebody try to rob him? No. He, he picked up a passenger and, you know, her boyfriend or whoever was shooting at the car. You're going to feel the type of way about that as as the as the son or, or the, the child of that parent. So that person who put them in harm's way is criminally ne negligent, connected to that, and the other person that actually did the shooting is also, that's attempted murder, period, point blank. So he was squeezing and letting off. So, you know, that's, that, that, yeah, that we're not going to have that. We're not going to have that. No, that's a fact, because he got in the car calm cool and collected she ain't getting the car distraught crying and saying yo please this guy's trying to you know hurt me and da 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 mm -hmm. nothing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. she got in the car with the attitude like oh drive off drive off mm -hmm. like, like the driver knew what was going on you know what i'm saying right. make right. sure he knew he's picking up the right passenger right and right rushing him you know what i'm saying right. so right. it's like if all of us can see that shit i know uh chicago pd can see that shit and they better go do their investigation. You know what I'm saying? Go into her text message because when she sat in the car, she was texting. So you mm -hmm. can figure out what the conversation was. And, and you know what I mean? Put charges on her forehead. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get the shooter after that. You feel me? Yeah. She's going to give it up. She's going to give it right away. And in the, in, in, in the Some, chat. Somebody on the way with your shooter. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And in the chat, they were saying drop her off. She belonged to the streets, which is funny. But I'm not I'm not letting her out the car. I'm, if if I'm that older man that's that that has no that's not connected into the streets or no type of way, don't I'm taking her ass to the precinct and I'm reporting this. Simple and plain. Facts. So, because yeah. you, he's a civilian. Right. And right. At one point, civilians didn't mix with street violence and street politics. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There was a separation between hardworking citizens and, and and those in the street. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Nowadays, there is no separation. That's and a fact. Bystanders are getting hit, hit up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he should brought. Hopefully, he brought her or brought the 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 recording to the police and let them do their investigation. They could easily find out where you picked her up at. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. All that yeah. is that's an easy case for Detective uh, uh, Marcus Burnett and all of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn that! I'm calling homicide. <laughs> no, no job, no check. You know what I'm saying? At least that's the most of us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My parents ain't leave me no money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no job, no check. You know what I'm saying? See, see, you was you was denied your mom's tit when you was younger, so you went and got a. You went in the gym when you're high school. You got an over a, a underside wife beater, and you know what I'm saying you out here <laughs> like your muscles and, and, and try to take over the world. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so I right, so your mom's titty out my out your psychoanalysis. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, all I you I said all that all you heard was titties. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so sorry. Bad boys quote. Bad boys quote. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a fact. All right, moving on. Moving on. All right, so the biggest New York City high school scandal in 30 years have hit, where they found that there was certain schools, such as 
I'm, I don't even want to say it, but <sighs> Brooklyn schools, some of the Brooklyn schools, y'all know I'm from Brooklyn. So some of the Brooklyn high schools, like South Shore, Thomas Jefferson, was caught playing with guys who were ineligible and too old. So some of the guys was like 19 years old on the team. But what made it worse, they just wasn't on the team playing like spotty minutes. Like these niggas was nice. Sorry, huh? <laughs> like that that's what make it worse when you when you overage and you cooking, they dunk in like like the, the team is like six four, six five. And in New York City, that's like a red flag. Like New York City, we got great basketball players, but a lot of our players is like six two and shorter. So when you got like you got like a plethora of dudes that's like six five on your high school team. Nah, Thumb, that's unheard of, son. Thumbs up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. So come to find out Thomas the school, Thomas Jefferson and South Shore High School was playing with guys who wasn't eligible and too old. Some guys was nice. What years? Huh? What years? Specific. Did they mention what years specifically? They, or? What years in particular, but they going back in the span of 30 years. So now mm. they do deep investigation on on their school and amongst a lot of the schools that, that won. Because again, like when I was in high school, I, I remember one year we played against Sebastian Telfair. And he was the shortest person on the team. And people know Sebastian is like 6'1". Uh, I want to say 6'2", but he's like 6'1". They're two guard, right? Some of y'all that know basketball, the two guard, Elijah Clark was six seven, bro. He's oh, it's only it's only for basketball. This is only for basketball. It's okay. only for basketball. So he's six seven. They're big man. I think his name was Jonathan Penny. I think he was like six six. The other two guys was like six six seven, and another dude was like six four. So again, in high school basketball, that in Brooklyn is like your father's is looking like a college team. It's like whoa, 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 whoa! What are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? So, it, it so the investigation is going expanding to the back to the next thirty years. So they're implicating saying that Thomas Jefferson and South Shore is just the first schools to be found. So now they don't have teams who won championships. So teams that normally win championships out of the Brooklyn area is normally uh, Lincoln, Grady. Um, I know I'm missing like a few other schools. Uh, Lincoln, Grady, T Thomas Jefferson, Boys and Girls. Those are like the upper echelon teams in the Brooklyn area. Uh, Robeson used to be a tough squad uh, uh, back in the 2000 years. Um, so yeah, so now they doing a whole investigation on that. So Man, who snitched, son? Somebody, somebody popping the tape, showing what they did last night and got tight. Tyrone Bixby is killing the little Jewish kids at the game. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was a, it was a it was a coach from Cardoza High School, all the way what's called those in the Bronx, that was like he felt like he got robbed a championship because. He felt like this team was just too, like, physically mature. So that's what sparked off the 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 investigation. So how we talk about Staten Island and it get all the way to Brooklyn first? Mm. I right, whatever you know what I'm saying. So now they, they now they 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 going in and finding out, you know, the this and the that you know of the last thirty years. They want to strip teams of championships and, you know, accolades that they feel like they haven't, you know, properly deserved, so. That's crazy, son. Yeah. Damn, they going all the way back 30 years. Yo, somebody dropped the ball and paid somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like. That's a fact. They can't get the, that time back. That's a fact. I don't know. In, in, in New York City, it's so discombobulated that I don't even think they can really do a proper uh, investigation. They say they can, but we'll see. I mean, thirty years is a long time. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of rosters. That's a lot of fucking um, uh, paperwork and the uh, 
what's the school, you know what I'm saying? The, the school fucking, not curriculum, but not the itinerary, but like with everybody's name in the school, you know what I'm saying? You got to mm-hmm. go through all that. Who are you paying to do all that? You know what I'm saying? It, that's, that's, they going back to 1994. God damn. That's 1994. I mean, 2024, that's 1994. That's, like, 1994, we was babies, you know? Like, yeah, so... Babies, but, I'm saying, like, we was... But they, what, they only concentrating on Brooklyn, or what was they... They, they all, all, all the PSAL schools? All, all the PSAL schools. Oh, all, yo. Say, yo. Yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of the city's money y'all y'all spending on for this investigation. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta remember, if those, those schools like Lincoln and all the schools that I named, when they had tall players, those schools got a pass because they're basketball upper echelon schools. Like kids would travel to go to them schools. Like how I would travel to, to go to Fort Hamilton. Like Fort Hamilton was a football school, so. It's the same thing for basketball. It's like, all right, we're gonna let you slide. I remember when I was a freshman, and um, and I remember Lincoln's senior team that year. They was taller than the team we had uh, that we played against. The, that Sebastian Telfair team, mm-hmm. taller than them. They had uh, they had some tall players, and it was guys that went on to St. John, St. John's, and they was tall dudes. So certain schools got passed. So now they now they digging it up. So. It is what it is. Give them people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, back their land. <laughs> I am done with the jokes. <laughs> yeah, so at the end of the day, um, you know, at the end of the day, is this something that is, is like they re- they that's a lot of resources to do all that. So it is what it is. Shout out to Felipe Lopez. He was 35 in high school. <laughs> Yo, that was yo. Felipe Lopez was a phenomenon in high school. He was in high school way before we was in high school. But oh, I remember he was like the he was like the 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 the, the Latino Jordan. Mm-hmm. He had the flags and and the whole nine. You know, yeah, they came out and showed out for him every game. Way yeah. too much like Providence or some shit, right? No, I don't know think he went to Providence. Nah, Felipe Lopez. He he went to he went to oh. I was. I want to say St. John's. Oh, yeah. He, he did go to St. John's. He went to St. John's. Yeah. And he would have had a better career. He got hurt. But Felipe Lopez was nasty in high school. And he had at least like 100 people for him every game. Not for the team. For him. Mm-hmm. And they will go anywhere in the city for him. If y'all look up Felipe Lopez, um... In New York City, basketball player, they pulled up for him. So that's going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting investigation. Okay, CBS signs uh, Dave Chappelle to a two billion dollar deal for a late night TV show. Ooh, we. Oh, he definitely, he definitely had to go to the parties. Oh, you, <laughs> he was at the parties. Yeah, had to go to the parties. They're not just gonna give you a TV show just cause you're nice. It's never about talent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Never about that. So, but the the Dave Chappelle before the Dave Chappelle show is not that Dave Chappelle no more. Cause he said he would never do that. Came back, they got bills, shit getting tight. You gotta get back in their good graces. You know what I'm saying? Now you did what you were supposed to do. All right, now we got a TV show for you. you know what I'm saying all laid out. Ready to go, you know what I'm saying? You don't put your dudes in and we welcome you back into the fold, into the fraternal order, and we're gonna bless you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna call my man. So I got another, you know what I'm saying? We got the connect for you and shit. Ah uh, ah. Uh. You just uh, gotta situate us. Ah uh, ah. Uh. We got we got the dope ox, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm saying? And and we got you. Don't even trip. Because you gotta think about two billion dollars for to to uh to to do TV. That's a lot of bread, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like bread, dog. So it's really showcasing that, yeah, you need to distract people from whatever you need to distract them from. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? 
oh, let's get Dave Chappelle in there. He got yeah. he got a lot of clout. He could he got the 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 uh the black people in the uproar. Yeah, they'll focus on him while we yeah. do whatever we doing over here. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because it's like in this in this game and where we at in this stage of the game, it's like two billion dollars can help the city of New York instantly. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even though if that, that's a city and this is entertainment, I get it. But it's a lot of money out here for nobody to know nothing. You know what I'm saying? So nobody don't know nothing. Two two billion is a lot of money, dog. Oh, just they just know TV shows. Don't nobody know nothing. That's a lot of money, dog. That's all it. Two billion Damn. for what? For for the late night TV. So so basically, basically he's he's gonna be the new. I don't want to say Jimmy Kimmel or Johnny Carson because they're white men, but $2 billion, they want to return on the investment. So that's a lot of money, dog. We're talking about, this is forever money. This is forever money. So this means he's going to be employed for the next 30 years because like when we was, when we was kids, John Leno and or Jay Leno and and all these other guys that had late night TV shows they've been on TV. Conan O'Brien, what, what, uh, Conan, Larry King, he's been on TV, but not as long as Jay Leno. So I'm making a point of saying the fact that Jay Leno had his nighttime TV show as long as we've been on this planet. He had to be retired by now. It can't be. He still can't be doing that shit. But but he, but even if he just retire, right? That's like forty years. Nah, son, ain't no way in hell of forty years you gonna keep my entertain, keep me still glued on to you. Pause. You know what I'm saying? But 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 let's keep it let's keep it all the way funky. If he retired, he's retiring because it's a new it's a new day, it's a new era, it's new faces. It's not because he can't do it. Mm-hmm. He's asleep. He's been doing it. So the point I'm making is that. He's been making this money. He's been really making this money for that long, bro. So $2 billion, that is forever money. This means that a company gives a single individual $2 billion. This means that you're going to be on TV for the next 30 years. So if you have a child today, they're going to know who Dave Chappelle is in 30 years. This is forever money. Mm Mm-hmm. And it also means I said, if I'm giving you $2 billion, that means you're mine. Mm -hmm. Whatever I say goes. Mm -hmm. Don't have no freedom to say whatever you want and do what you want. No, no, no. Not for no $2 billion, you don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You better read that script Mm -hmm. and and do exactly as we say. You know what I'm saying? So I I just thought in itself, that's just a lot of money. To you know, for you know, and I and I'm glad he got that money. I'm glad he got that money. But we talk about it all the time that everybody got a price, dog. You check, you check all your all the all the stuff that you stand on. Yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna do this. I ain't gonna do that. You can check that at the door when they say, "Yo, two bill." Oh, you don't want two bill? All right, cool. Five bill. They they're gonna hit a number that you can't say no to. Only very few. Who is that intact with this so where you can't buy them because they understand the, the 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 structure of what they're trying to do and know how to do it on their own yeah so that that again that two billion dollars come with a lot of uh, a really 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 short lease you know what i'm saying you can't mm-hmm. go but so far with that shit you know what i'm saying a lot of apologies I, a lot of apologies will be on the rise with a lot of these jokes that, again, mark my words. I said it first. He's going to be cracking a lot of jokes and it's going to offend this person, that person. So it's going to be a lot of apologies. It's going to be very strict. But $2 billion is $2 billion. It's, it's people out here that's taking a whole lot of shit for, for $13.99 an hour. So $2 billion for his own piece that he could live with. Cause, cause what, what, what he shit, what, what he eat, don't make me shit. So at the end of the day, he's, you know, he's, you know, satisfied with his deal. Two billion dollars is a lot of money. That's forever money. You never go broke. You, you, 
your children's children's children is in place. This this is wealth. This is wealth. As long as you do what they say, as soon as you don't do what they say, they're gonna take that two billion dollars straight out your account. You know what I'm saying? As long as, you, as long as you steer steer uh, steer clear of the other shit and you do what they tell you to do, oh, you're gonna be good. Because we saw what happened with Kanye and we started flipping out. They took that billion dollars away from the nigga. You know well, I, I, I don't I don't want to put him and Kanye in the same breath, mainly because. Only, only on the aspect of if you don't do what they say, they're gonna take your money. That's my own, my whole point. I, as long as you do what they say, you got two billion dollars. Cool. If you but, don't but, do what they say, they're gonna come in your account and take that money, same way as they gave it to you. I, I get, I get that. But entertainment is a different ball game from the foundation of hip hop and fashion. But I get the point that you're making. You know, having claws and things like that. But when you have the right entertainment lawyers, like yo, yeah, I gotta work it out. Ain't nobody taking no money. He's showing up to work. He going well, them same entertainment laws is all part of the same. They all part of the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, but I'm talking about the fact that on on him not losing his money and him pulling up to do an apology. That's as far as it's gonna go. I guarantee it. I guarantee it because they're yeah, not. He's gonna, he gonna stare. He's gonna stare clear, and so he could get that bread. You know what I'm saying? Because they gonna, that type of money. Check that ego. Niggas gonna check that. Uh, braggadocious energy, stand on this and stand on that at the door. As soon as they walk into that office, a whole different nigga. Yeah, I mean, they're they not going to invest that type of money into somebody that is not going to do what they're going to do. But at the same time, when, you, when you're when you in business and you're working, it's very hard to take from somebody when they haven't abused their mortgage clause. So they can't just take it that's why I say you can't really put Kanye in it because Kanye, like his morals clause, is the reason why they felt like they could take that money back. So if you're not in jeopardy of that, that's just law. That's just law. And if you're not in jeopardy of that in the in the entertainment space, then they can't take his money. That's right, why. So if we talk about morals, who's who's deciding what morals is what within the it, contract that we it's on that contract? Because right. you see what I'm saying, like because. What people don't talk about, especially with athletes and entertainers, when they sign contracts, this is why uh, uh, Michael Vick, this is why uh, Plaxico Burris, this is why when a lot of these guys get jammed up within their contract, it's called morals clause. So when they uh, when they uh, abuse their morals clause or they uh, or they agree to the contract of the morals clause, now they they are, they are here to the the punishment of what the morals clause would be. That's why Plastic Cool Burrs goes to jail for shooting himself in the damn club. This is why Michael Vick goes to jail for, for dog fighting, which he wasn't even presently there majority of the time. This is why Marv Albert went to jail for his sexual escapades and things of that nature. The difference with Marv Albert is when he got out of jail, he was able to go back to his job. See what I'm saying? So that's that's just within the that's within the morals clause. If he doesn't obey, if he doesn't abuse the morals clause, he doesn't necessarily have to toe the line as long as he doesn't abuse the morals clause. They have to pay him his money. So you know what I'm saying? But that's that in itself. You know what I'm saying? Two billion dollars is forever money. So uh so basically we're not black after you sign a contract. We're not black at all. That's a whole nother conversation. We're melanated. Black is for people who are three fourths of a person and three fourths of a people, and we're not that. We're not that. We're not that, beloved. We're not that. We're part of the tribes, and we are part of different tribes, depending on where you're from. It's a whole nother conversation. We, like, you know, what I'm saying we we'll get to that conversation one day. You no longer. You're no longer. Your black mama and daddy child. Mm. Yeah, we again, we're not black. We're not black. We're melanated. We ebony, we copper tone, we mud bone people. You know what I'm saying? We, we the people of the tribes. So getting money has, it shouldn't have nothing to do with uh, being disowned by your family. Being money is supposed to be a part of that prosperity. And get into that bag elevation, right? 
But when you deal with these corporations, again, this is why my brother named the movies that he named earlier about uh, Skull and Bones, about ritual, about fraternity, right? It's a, it's a blood contract. So you can't sign a contract and then you don't like the rules after you done signed the contract. So that's what we're that's what we're alluding to, cause they 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 asking about it in the chat. So yeah, I can't see the for some reason I can't see the chat at all. That shit don't pop up on my end, so I have no idea what the chat asking and shit. Yeah, so it was like <laughs> Rowan Jackson, the Melanated Laws Dictionary. Yeah, that's coming up. That's coming up later. Uh, but yeah, that's what the contract is about. Uh, you're talking about morals. Uh, yeah, but there's a morals clause in contracts yeah that's the that's the thing with the morals clauses they're right. the ones dictating the morals when they don't have morals you know what i'm saying that's correct but then you can't complain about the morals when no, you no, sign. no no we're not we're not we're not there's no you're, complaining once you sign this shit you sign it you know what right. i'm saying that's what i'm saying that's, so what, that's I'm, what i'm saying about that's why i brought up kanye like nigga you signed the you signed it Right, you right. The contract. So right. why are you going against the contract all of a sudden? Now you trying to be enlightened. Now, nah, nigga, you already signed the jump. You know what I'm saying? Just toe right. your line, keep doing what you're doing, make your 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 tees with holes in them and shit. You know what I'm saying? And keep mm -hmm. doing that. Don't all of a sudden now sit be toe back and try to be enlightened. You already done signed the contract. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. me? Uh shout out to Johnny Cash in the building. You already know what it is. Hit that like button. But um, but yeah. Nah, that's a fact. No, cause and they also was alluding to it in the chat as well, too. So yeah, so um at the end of the day, happy for, for Dave Chappelle. Um, because he's happy with his own deal. He's gonna make two billion dollars from it. Hey man, you know what I'm saying? Do your thing. Uh what's the topic? We we're at the we on the time to rap portion. So we knocking out these uh different uh subjects that's going on in the world today. All right, cool. Moving on. Uh, two former Mississippi sheriff deputies have been sentenced to their roles in torturing two melanated men. The so-called members of the Goon Squad. A judge sentenced Hunter Edward to 20 years and Jeffrey Middleton to 17 years for crimes that was erroneous and despicable. The person they tortured, he's still alive or he passed? Correct. Yes, both both men are still alive. So instead of taking these these men to the precinct and processing them and having them, do, you know, do uh do you know do process, they took them to this private house. They tied them up. They sexually abused them. Hey yo. And then they physically abused them. Hey yo. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Hey, yo, that's yeah. Well, they need to, they need to after sentencing them. Now they need to go backlog all the other jumps, all the other uh, 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 cases they then quote unquote solved. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, so these are the first two officers that's up from a six man squad in this particular precinct. So this six man squad is known as the Goon Squad, and you know when. So let's say they arrest these two guys. They take them back to the house. And now the other four pulls up to this house and hmm. do types of God knows what to them. Ungodly stuff. You know what I'm saying? To these men. Like. That, like that, you know what I'm saying? Like the things, the things that they did to them, they, they noted that obviously they beat, they beat them up. They, they, they popped them with the stun gun multiple times and then they sexually abuse them. So these two, yeah. are the first two, and then the other four guys is, you know, coming up on, on a sentence. Yeah, because I want to know whose house they brought him to. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> they didn't specify that, but they yeah, said... But once they, once they got, eventually you're going to have to let that information out. Mm -hmm. They... they you, you what's what state was this in Mississippi? You said? Mississippi. So niggas ain't really getting that much bread where you could have a second house, a stash crib, 
and you just go to the stash crib. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying? That's where you you do your dirt at. You know what I'm saying? So that's somebody's crib. Well, they what they in the goon squad jump. You know what I'm saying? But, but they alluded to this. They didn't say necessarily who house it was. All they just said was it was a it was a a, a unmarked home. So nobody was living at this home. So this is a house that they had access to and just, you know what I'm so saying? This, so this is just a random crib that, that they had access to that support, that had electricity and all that? Yes, this is what they're saying. <laughs> this is what they're saying. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So if it's a random unmarked house, that means that nobody lived there. There shouldn't be no electricity. You know what I'm saying? It you feel me? It should be cold in that bitch. You know what right. I'm saying? All, so, all I'm trying to allude to is like it seems as though like this is they playhouse. You know what right, I'm saying? right, right. Correct, correct. Because it's like you can't just automatically tell them you pick these uh, two brothers up and then m randomly you just pick a house out of nowhere. Like yeah, we're gonna take them to this random crib and correct. beat their ass. You know what I'm saying? Correct. You feel me? So the correct. perimeter has to be uh has to be already checked out. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. you, you know nobody gonna just randomly pop at the house while you doing whatever the weird shit you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the only other people that you know is going to come there is people that's in your squad. Right. Mm -hmm. And the then on top of the fact, for you to torture or tie somebody up or walk, just walking through the house off rip, you need electricity. Facts. You know what Facts. I'm saying? So who's paying the bill for the electricity? Facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like they saying in the chat, there's an Airbnb, but you can't even Airbnb that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you just can't randomly Airbnb as soon, the, the date, the same day. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Within two, three hours. Now, that's not how Airbnb work. You got to right. be within like at least 24 hours. Right. And you can't right. hold somebody. If you hold somebody, the most you can hold them for is 72 hours without charging them. Right. And, and I know, and I know the chat is joking about that, but you know, it's, it was just funny. No, yeah. that's a good point, but it's still it's still loose to the fact that that's somebody's crib within the squad. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Right. So even if you don't get the other people, you get some of them circumstantially because you allow them to do the crime in your crib. So just off that alone, nigga, you you liable. You know what I'm saying? And and with the and with these acts. 20 years, 17 years, that's not enough time, dog. It's not enough time. That's not that's enough. Why I asked, that's why I asked if they were still deceased, like if they had to die or whatever. Right. It's, it's and not, then on top of that, it's Mississippi. So and then I'm on, surprised they got 20. One and buddy on, got 20. And, and on top of that, these are cops. They should know better. So anytime when you should know better, your sentences should be even harsh, harsher than what it is. No, like, no that's a fact. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah, twenty years is not enough, but at least twenty five for both. How you get one twenty right. the other seventeen? That don't even make sense. Right? Didn't they both do the crime? Didn't they both scoop them up? Didn't they both do the weird shit that they was doing? Like you know what I'm saying? Like yo, that's a fact. That's a fact. So it, it's just again, the only time twenty years. 17 years when that's a lot of time when when these people could do that what they call uh not concurrent but uh consecutive right because I'm, I'm i believe consecutive is that you're doing it like you know you're going to keep doing it you're not going to do like 10 years for good behavior and then be out you know what i'm saying just doing uh being no, you got to do the whole 20 right but right. again, this is Mississippi, and we know how Mississippi get down. I don't know what the laws and stipulations is for this type of crime. I don't know if they make you do 85% of the time, and then you might get out on good behavior type shit. I don't know. But if you're a cop and you go to jail, they might look out for you. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. who knows? Sure. But that's just crazy. I just hope they get the rest of them. And then not only, even if you can't get the rest of them for this crime right here, I'm pretty sure if you look at their paperwork, shit ain't going to start adding up right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Should we replace police with robots? No. Still mm -hmm. need 
physical presence of such of police officers, but I think they should do a much better job as far as um, winging, winging out the, 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 you know, these type of cops with these mindsets that think that they could form these um, super squads amongst the police squad and, and just be out here on bullshit. So they need to do a much better job uh, was vetting people, you know. So especially the process got to be a lot tougher, son. Yes, yeah, especially their psychological state and their upbringing should be a part of that vetting process uh, more because you you have more people who grow like they, we joke about it about bad boy all the time. You grow up, you grow up being uh, uh, like that, like the really like the the soft kid in school. You get a gym membership, you get brolic, you get older, you get a little confidence, and then you get a badge and a gun. That could be very, very dangerous. So they they should do a better job vetting uh, these officers, in my opinion. Moving on. uh, Oh, my God. Uh, Illinois federal judge Sharon Coleman has ruled... Illegal immigrants can now carry guns legally. That sentence don't even make sense. How the fuck you an illegal immigrant, but you could carry a gun legally? Like, what are, what are you talking about here, son? So y'all, so y'all basically, y'all basically turn in the impoverished people of society in Chicago against these illegal immigrants and y'all pinning them against each other mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because already the impoverished people of the society feel a feel a type of way that they've been living here for this long not getting shit and these people come in with a few months and they get everything that these people were asking for for 30 40 years Back. so already that already that right there is it, it it's already a boiling point now you allow them to have guns how how is that even possible like this is what i'm talking about like who's who this is like yo that's a pop in the tape show them what you did last night if you don't pull this off for us you know what i'm saying that that shit you did mm-hmm. we're gonna, we gonna let the chicago sun know about it mm-hmm. so if you don't want that shit to be in the front page news pass this law mm-hmm. all right all right i'm gonna do it like yo, what's going on and where's the checks and balances how does that even go together mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Where's all these lawyers that studying law and, and want to be a lawyer? Like this should be easy. Like yeah, th- this should be easy for you to go through the the paperwork and be like, nah, 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 this thing ain't right. We're gonna go to the Supreme Court with this. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't want to do that because you might lose your bar license, and that's the only way you're gonna make money. So you gotta toe the line. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own gang, son. Mm-hmm. Everybody got their own gang. Some people throw gang signs up. Some people dress a certain way. But everybody got their own gang, and you can't go against the gang. Yeah, I I, I was saying a previous show that because they saying in the chat that all all thing all of this stuff happens on purpose. It's a fact. There's there's a there's a bigger play at hand than just this right here. But this is a domino that's dropping off in this particular city and. It's not just going to be for this particular city only. It's just a domino, so it's going to be an, an a, you know, a cause and effect to this, to other states doing this. You know, because we talked about last episode how in the state of Maine that illegal immigrants, if you go to the state of Maine, they have programs where you get get a, a brand new apartment and pay no rent for two months. I mean, for two years, so you get a rent free apartment for two years. They got another program where you go, you you will be able to buy house housing worldwide as a legal immigrant, where you don't have to have a down payment, you don't have to have the closing costs, you don't even have to pay the mortgage interest on the house. The, the only thing that you're paying is the interest and the house when you sell the house. So if you sell the house and you make a profit, the the the, the lender is going to make a profit as well. So why they can't do that for everybody? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So again, when you hear stuff like this, why would a why would a, a, a an illegal 
need a gun anyway. You focus on finding a place to rest your head. You focus on on on, on just the necessities of life. Being able, to, being able to have somewhere you can rest your head, take a damn shit, take a shower, and close the door behind you. Then get you a job. So that way you can keep this damn roof over your head and you can put clothes on your back and food on the damn table. Like, ain't these, ain't, these ain't these other finance. immigrants that have been always coming over here in, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s. They came over here, put their head down, they worked, they grind, they put food on the table properly, they went through the proper steps, got their kids in school and all that shit, and went through the proper steps, you know what I'm saying? You, you, these immigrants you bringing in is not those type of immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they definitely not. And that don't even make no. That doesn't even make sense because it's like, okay, you give them a legal gun. What if they start robbing innocent people in the block? That's just doing their they doing their own job, going to work. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of their families. They don't have a gun because they they putting their trust in into the police and all that other stuff. But mm -hmm. meanwhile, they're giving them guns. Now they go and turn around and and doing a home invasion. And we live in a different time. Like before COVID, you didn't see people wear the shysties. Now, after COVID, you're seeing all types of people wearing shysties in everyday life. Like if if you just saw that beforehand, you'd be like, "Yo, why this dude got a mask on walking you in?" Already sus. Right now, it's it's standard practice. Right. Why, why not? So, again, so if you giving if you giving illegal immigrants guns, then regular average citizens should get guns. It's going to be like the OK Corral. You try to shoot me, I'm going to shoot you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, Raekwon said you bust, I bust back. And I'm calling the police to come pick this body up. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, see, you you know how I am, bro. I'm a big in-game in guy. What is the in-game for illegal immigrants to have guns legally? Like, what is the in-game when the in-game is supposed to be for these people to find housing? jobs so they could have some sort of security and be productive citizens that's what i'm saying like i'm, I'm with you on that where's the end right. game? that's why i'm like right. saying like okay where's the rest of these other lawyers where's these other judges that don't agree with this one judge like where are they at because mm -hmm. what is the whole point of this you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it's funny enough they just came out with this movie called civil war just around this time where y'all doing all this fuckery mm-hmm so you trying to uh you trying to create a a, a a situation where this civil war shit is gonna pop off. Mm -hmm. Why don't you I'm I'm surprised they don't go to states like fucking West Virginia, um uh what other states? Like uh they ain't bringing them niggas to Mississippi. I don't hear that, nothing about that. You're right. You know what I'm right. saying? Um Kansas, you know what I'm saying? Like places that need the population, pretty much. Right. South Dakota, North Dakota. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they see they don't want people in them states, bro, because it's I'm that's why that's why I know them states is popping on the low. Like we joked about it before. Like ain't nobody coming to see you in South Dakota. But these places are hidden gems for a reason. And they're not gonna send them there. They're gonna send them to Maine. They're gonna send them to Up Buck, Georgia, where they tell people if you go to this particular part of Georgia, they give in everybody seven thousand dollars to this part of georgia they they, they said that a, a couple weeks ago if you move to this part of georgia they give a new resident seven thousand dollars a piece send them to canada well, i'm just saying like yo it, that that's a fact because it's like i don't see you sending them niggas to fucking um uh, all these other places. So yeah, it definitely feels like an agenda. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like y'all really trying to pull something. You know what I'm saying? And, and my bad, go ahead. No, nah, go ahead, go ahead. But see, my the bigger picture for me, I I really believe it's uh all right. So we, because we live in a different time and age, the us as melanated people, we're no longer going into the military. We're no longer buying houses. We're no longer whatever that is supposed to be like the the American dream. We're no longer doing that. We're no longer uh, going to college.
thinking that college is our saving grace. You still have people who are educated and still go to college, but they go to college for a particular purpose. Like you got a whole bunch of people that got a degree in one thing, but the job that they have had nothing to do with that, that, that degree that they went for. So mm -hmm. by and large, this era of people are not going to colleges in droves. And it's not because of, of you know, not having the resources because people don't want to go. And they, and they realize that you don't have to go to college to get money, right? So you don't have as much people in the military. You don't have as much people voting the way that they wanted the vote, the vote to go. You don't have people that that outwardly, outwardly looking to be blue collar people when I, when I think that's more of an agenda because you got people out here that want to pay their bills. So regardless if, if, if they got to do uh, custodial work or, or construction, whatever the job is, if it's a good paying job, people will work it, especially if you're from here. But the agenda is that these jobs that they're talking about that are blue collar jobs that have 60,000, 80,000 attached to it. So you mean to tell me people choose to work at Walmart? You mean to tell me people choose to work at the gas station or at 7-Eleven, I should say? Hell no. That's the job that they can find. But these other jobs that, are, that have 80,000, 60,000, 80,000, 100,000 attached to it within five years, you don't have that posted everywhere for equal employment. So again, it's a, the end game is to bring these people in, not send them back, get that, have these people come in, get them acclimated, get them free housing, get, get them on a system where they can get food, get them a system where they help them to gain access to these jobs. Like these, like these immigrants that are moving into the country, they're not moving into the, projects they put them in nice neighborhoods they put them in nice neighborhoods so the, the agenda to me is that they trying to they trying to either cancel us all the way out or they trying to get their numbers up like okay the the melanated population normally we would have 13 percent of that vote now it's going to be down to to seven percent how can we get that six percent get get these these migrants in here and you know what I'm saying? That, that's hook them up and they're going to adhere to what we're doing. But my, my thing is like, how are you going to fast track for you to vote? You have to be a citizen and you can't. I mean, I say you can't, but we talking about the, the system, but you can't fast track that for them to be citizens. It's like what you automatically just stamp and now they citizens, you know what I'm saying? Or you going to bypass that and just. You know what I'm saying? Like so, so there is a way that they can fast track it if migrants can find a job. Because if migrants can find a job, all they would need is a tax ID number. Because obviously they're not gonna have a social security number. So if they don't have a social security number, if they have a tax ID number, then they can file taxes and then of course they will allow the program for them to vote. But it's not gonna be in, in, in it's not gonna be enough time. Cause you getting them in now, it's a well within the the, the tax season, right? We, correct. When correct. is uh, when is the any type of elections? Is in December, correct? Well, yeah, so I, well, I yeah. think for next year. It was this year. It's this year. It's, it's October, November, no, right. November. Right. So, so here's the, so all right. So here's the thing, right? If they wanted to, this is if they wanted to, right? What they can do is still give people the tax ID number, right, for this year, even though they're going to pay taxes next year. <laughs> see, see what I'm saying? Like, there's all these type of loopholes to, to finesse and, and, and get what they want. But before, they, they, loopholes were always there, but they never pulled the trigger on it. That's, right. my, whole, that's my whole thing. Right. I've been had these loopholes. And um, my damn fucking poster the fell and shit. <laughs> <laughs> scared the shit out of me. Uh, I was like, yo, I was about to be like, yo, duck, bro. <laughs> you see me look back real quick, like, what the fuck? <laughs> we talk, we talk the truth. They try to set me up. Type you know what I'm saying? The government knocking down posters, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all talking too much. <laughs> so my point is, the lo these loopholes been here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm talking about is. I've been through that shit where I was born in Haiti. I came here when I was a kid. 
And every year from fifth grade all the way to eighth grade, I had to go down to the uh, federal building with my mom, be there all day. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like all day, me and my mom had to leave the crib at like six in the morning. And it was always around November, cold as fuck. I miss a whole school day just to be in this office all day to finally see a lawyer to just get my uh, paperwork, my green card stamp to do the same shit again next year. Mm -hmm. I had to do that shit for like four years, right? But then when I got to eighth grade, that's when I finally got my citizen. It took me years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was a little kid, a little mm -hmm. dude. Mm -hmm. So my point is like, y'all been had these loopholes. Mm -hmm. But y'all make us go through all these hurdles and all this other bouffale. When these people coming in, you just fast track them in. Like, whoa, 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 what's going on? So already that's another form of creating animosity. Because like, why are you picking and choosing when it was already there for people? Like, you could have just been on, did that for everybody. Mm -hmm. But you just picking and choosing who gets what and uh, who gets this and y'all don't get that and now nah, he's okay. He gonna get this, like, huh? Yeah. Who's yeah. okay in these these decisions? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. So, so if if that if that's what they want to do, if they what they say, we could get into some gent, we could do this like gentlemen, or we could get into some straight gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why you have to look at these subtle changes in these certain type of places where they got these subtleties and changing laws um, and, and these laws been in place for years, longer than we've been alive. So now that they want to change it, it's like, whoa. So that's why these little things matter. It took me four years to get my family from the Philippine Filipinos and I'm a service member. You see what I'm saying? And they got bases in the Philippines and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and picking and choosing who gets what, who making these decisions. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I agree, bro. No, this was a game for them to win because you're making decisions for people who've been here long before just can jump in front of them. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you have people here that's from here who keep their head down, work hard. And they actually believe in the American dream, the traditional American dream. Believe in if they work hard enough that they will get what they earn and deserve, right? But you have people that's being fast-tracked. So my question is, if we was migrants to other countries, would, would we be on a fast-track pace in other countries? Hell no. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can understand housing and I can understand programs to help people getting jobs. But again, these jobs that people are qualified for, we're not talking about just giving somebody a job that they're not qualified. People that are qualified for. You got people with master's, master's degrees that work at Walmart. You got people with with bachelor's degree that that work at uh 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 let me fix this shit real quick with the check place you know what i mean so at the end of the day when i when i see this i'm like the end game is screaming to me it's screaming and as a people like what like it, it's it's this is real this is warfare and we don't even think of it like that. This is warfare. You can't play with their numbers. What with, with, with Ice Cube saying that song? Don't play with my yo-yo. It's going to be up. Same thing for them. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so moving on, moving on, moving on. All right, so uh, a Queens woman have been arrested for having squatters removed from her home. So she owned the home. She went by the house. There was like three people at the house. They had locked the door, so she had to call the police. So the police is telling her, if you have these people removed, even though it's your house, 
you're going to go to jail because they've been living in the house because they have access to the house. <laughs> Yo, this American dream shit is a fucking nightmare because that don't even make no sense. How the fuck they quarters, but they have access to the house? Obviously, they ain't have access to the house legally. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They went in there illegally, changed the locks on her. That's why she couldn't get into her own home. Mm -hmm. So because she changed the lock, they changed the locks. They have more rights than the, the owner of the house. They ain't paid no taxes on the crib, nothing. No rent. They they haven't paid no rent. So one of the squad is saying, said that um, he has an agreement with, with with someone, but obviously the agreement wasn't with her. So she owns the house. So you have no agreement with nobody. So he said, "Well, I um I I paid for the locks. I I've been doing stuff around the house. So this is my this is basically my apartment." Yo, New York is crazy, son. So they 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 arrested the two out of the three squatters. And then they arrested her. And the one guy that said that he has a right to be there wholeheartedly because he put money into the property. And if she, if she want him, this is his words. He said this on camera. If she wants me gone, she has to give me the money that I put into the property. And then I'll go. What money? What money did you put in? The locks? The locks and he and he and whatever he felt that he because you know he it's all bullshit. So whatever right. he felt that he was doing around the house. So now basically she's gonna have to take them to 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 court to then now evict them out her own crib. Like that's yo like this shit don't even make any kind of sense. And you and you know this process now takes can take anywhere from eight to two years as a process. So this is not going to be they could go to court like next week and get it situated. Now, nah, this is going to be a lengthy process on them completely getting away from her house. This is her house. Uh, that don't even make no sense because, like, you have to prove. How, how can you prove that you have rights to the home if you didn't get into the home legally? How did you get into the home in the first place? So this is something that that the police officers they can't make that decision on on like you know on live foot you know what I'm saying so that's why the police officer says yo y'all have to go to court for that we can't we can't dictate on who has act the proper access to this house even though this woman had the paperwork she had her paperwork in her hand. And this is what I'm talking about. How you got these police that don't know law, don't know nothing. Maybe in that situation, that could be a civil matter. That's why there's like, um, they can't really handle it. But my, I'm still going back to my point is how did they get into the house in the first place? If they got into the house illegally, is that not a crime? And now mm -hmm. can't you get involved? Mm -hmm. Because what kind of documentation could you have with somebody if it's not with the owner? Like what are y'all talking about? If it ain't if it ain't drugs and guns, y'all don't give a fuck. Right. And and, and and murders. Anything else, oh no, we 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 can't do nothing about it. You gotta go see a judge for that, kid. And this well, is in the meantime, in the meantime, we just gonna arrest you for wasting our time. Like what? Yeah, so this this is gonna this is getting nasty real quick. Um I've never I've never seen anything like that. Um but that's why I was telling people in, in past episodes, I referred a must-see movie with Pacific Heights. Um, Pacific Heights, it wasn't about squatters. It, you just got to watch the movie. It it talked about uh, uh, being a tenant, but he was legally a tenant. And then he wasn't adhering by the, by the, by the, uh, by the lease. And then they tried to get him out. And then he ended up basically owning the house. Cause he would do little things, so his end game was to get the the landlords out the house completely, mm. being the tenant. So y'all just gotta watch that movie. It's called Pacific Heights with Michael Keaton. Y'all gotta watch that movie.
but it it aligns to this story. So this is this is sad. I, I me personally, I can't even imagine myself in that situation. I come home and these people are in my house, and I can't be like, "Yo, y'all got to roll." It it basically goes back down to what they taught us in school and the knowledge that we got. None of that shit is benefiting us. At the end of the day, because there's certain. It, it's like a whole gray area because you tell a person, oh, you got to go get you got to go to school. You got to go to college, get a degree. Once you get your degree, you get your high paying job. You go get a house. You pay a mortgage. Now you own the house. But then a nigga could just come in, change the locks. And all of a sudden he owned the crib. So why the fuck did I go all do all that to get a mortgage on a house when a nigga I could just see a crib? Nobody's been there for a month. I just go change the locks. Now I got a new crib. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Crazy. That's nasty work. That's nasty work. And, and them dudes are super lame but everybody has some sort of finesse game. Um, New York City, they bust six brothels in the last two weeks. Uh, so they, they so they trying to crack down the sex game. Uh, in New York City because there's a lot of people that's being sex trafficked in New York City, especially right. in this area. I'm glad they're doing something productive. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. crack on that, especially on the sex trafficking and all that other stuff. Definitely, you know what I'm saying? Put foot to ass, pause, and, 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 and get that cleaned up for sure. I, right. I, I applaud on that. And And lastly... This a, this is a new thing now. Top high school athletes that are juniors, right? So these are guys that were highly scouted. That's being, uh, you know, tempted to go to all the big schools: your Alabamas, your Texas, your, your Michigans, you know, your USC's. All the big schools. So now it's going to be a new thing where the high school seniors is now going to start sitting out their senior year to procure their 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 scholarship offer to college. But well, once you need your senior year just not, not necessarily if you if you're highly if you're highly scout because you know they do the top one hundred for like high school is different from when we was in high school. So now they do the top one hundred for sophomores, juniors and seniors so the focal point now is the sophomores because now when they're seniors they can offer them you can actually offer a sophomore in high school so what so what they don't play their whole senior year at all they, so now is the thing with now these scott these players these kids uh, are going to forego their senior year in high school sports just so they could say i'm not going to put myself at risk I already got the scholarship. I'm going to focus on my grades and I'm not going to play my senior year to, to make sure that I don't get hurt. Well, what about staying in shape and being all, you know what I'm saying? Who's going to stay on top of them for that? Well, I mean, I, I guess they will have obviously like, I won't say obviously, but they, they're going to, they're going to have to set up some sort of workout plan so that way they yeah. can. Cause yeah. you don't play your senior year. You know what I'm saying? You eat a couple of chicken sandwiches and you don't work out and, and, and do a couple of burpees, you know what I'm saying? You're going gonna, gonna to be sluggish going into spring uh, summer camp. Yeah. So, of course, so now if they sitting out their senior year, they go going to college in the spring instead of the fall. So now that's, like, that's okay. the new game of doing that. So what do you think about that? As long as they um, – they don't play in the games or like practice, but they still go conditioning what they coach and the the college call the high school coaches, make sure that they go into conditioning and workouts mm -hmm. and staying on their meal prep. Then I could see that. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now you want to keep your body uh, fresh for when you go to, to go play for your, your top school. Yeah. As mm -hmm. long as that there's a program or a, an incentive to keep you, Still working out, still, you know what I'm saying? Rejuvenize, still 
uh, at your top speed and you know what I'm saying? Like you're doing your workouts and all that stuff, but you will now so more so focus on school, but you still go to the AM and afternoon workouts, but you don't practice and you don't go to the games. But that that's kind of whack because it's like, damn, you're going to miss out on that last camaraderie. You know what I'm saying? With your, your boys and them. I was just about man. to say. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, ain't nothing more than you being in the locker room, yeah. going to practice. With your niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like that that time frame you won't miss out on. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's kind of tough, son. That's kind of tough. Cause that shit was hella yo, going to practice, but you, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? You you chilling with your 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 niggas on in in school, you in your your corner. Uh for us in Bayside is the second floor. So niggas on the second floor chilling. You know what I'm saying? When school let out, like, all right, my nigga, we're gonna go to practice. So niggas. Walking to practice, joking all the way over there. Then you get into the locker room, joking on niggas. Yeah. Throw your helmet, shoulder pads on. Then you go outside, you still joking on niggas. You know what I'm saying? The whole time. Yeah. So you gonna forego all of that too? Yeah. I don't know, son. That's tough, son. These kids is built different, son. And see, I think it's a good idea if your school is not good. I think it's a good idea if you're going to be very individual based, like, yo, I don't really mess with my teammates like that. I procure my, 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 uh, my scholarship. I'm going to focus on my grades and working out and, you know, doing all the other things. If you're not close with your teammates, but how many of us actually play high school football and was close with our teammates? Like I don't, I had, I've had, a lot of great games in high school football, right? But my best memories is with my dogs, either in the lunchroom, the locker room, you know, cracking jokes, you know, being wild fun. Even in the weight room, we was cracking jokes. We used to crack jokes on, on guys who worked out too hard. Like, you trying to do that extra 25? Look at that, you fiend. And like, you know, but just as that camaraderie, like, you know, it, it was a part of that, that banner. With your with your with your bros, so I I get it, you know. But this is for th- these guys who are going to be, like again. They got the scholarships in their junior year, so if they got the scholarships in their junior year. Okay, cool. But I honestly, you should still you still should be playing your senior year because if you're that good, chances of you getting hurt is very small compared to you chance in it you know what i'm saying so you yeah. really you, you playing not to get hurt instead of just playing like your senior year is supposed to be like your, your like your outcome and party year where you feel like you got superpowers you know and then on top of that you're playing with your bros all the things that come with being a senior senior night you got your parents there like it's it's supposed to be litty so but that's going to become a new thing um, where guys are sitting out there high school senior years, they're going to work out, they're going to stay in shape, um, and they're going to enroll into school in the spring. And, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be the new thing. All right, so moving on, uh, our next segment is brought to you by Bravo Section. Make sure you go to BigBravoSection.com. Again, Big Bravo Section. Dot com. You can book a session with one of the best photographers in the world, especially if you're in the Miami area. If you're not, you can still book a session, fly out to you, and take care of your session. Petty thought. You got a petty thought for us? All right. So, chat, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had the movies, the fraternity movies, then uh, the segment where it was Hollywood either acts us, and I brought up Prince Hall Freemasonry. So, I got to. I got a little segment for y'all. So we're going to break down the word fraternal. The legal definition of the word fraternal means brotherly, relating, or belonging to a fraternity or an association of persons formed for a mutual aid and benefit, but not for profit, right? Next word is fraternity, means a body of persons associated for their common interests, business, or pleasure. In American colleges, a student organization, either nationally chartered society comprising mainly of affiliated chapters or a single chapter in one institution. 
formed chiefly to promote friendship and welfare among the members and usually having a secret rights and names consisting of Greek letters. Now, why I mentioned that is I kind of thought about, okay, we have all these fraternities and sororities, right? Mm -hmm. What about all our black fraternities and sororities? Come to find out we have nine black fraternities and sororities. So the top nine black fraternities and sororities are Alpha Phi Alpha, which was founded on December 4th, 1906. Alpha Cap Alpha Kappa Alpha found is a sorority founded in 1908. Delta Sigma Theta founded January 13th, 1913. Kappa Alpha Psi founded in January 5th, 1911. Omega Psi Phi founded in November 17th, 1911. Phi, uh, Phi Beta Sigma founded January 9th, 1914. Zeta Phi Beta founded January 16th, 1920. Sigma Gamma Rho founded in January, I'm sorry, November 12th, 1922. And this is the most latest one that was founded. Iota Phi Theta founded in September 19th, 1963. So this would consist of uh, the National Panhellenic Council. This is the umbrella of all the black fraternities and sororities throughout the country. Now, if you remember all the dates I mentioned, majorities were found in the early 1900s, right? We're in 2024 now. What's the progress? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's 100 years for eight of these uh, organizations. What have they been doing? Like my brother was mentioning about the, the judge that um, in Chicago that allowed illegal immigrants to have legal guns. I'm pretty sure eight of these uh, fraternities and sororities, because with all nine of these fr uh, fraternities and sororities is 1.5 million members. Out of that 1.5 million members, 10% of that could be top tier lawyers. Easily. Easily. Chicago is a predominantly black city. This is all black fraternities and sororities, right? So, you know what I'm saying? Where's, where's the help? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there's judges that's part of these organizations. Where is it at? So my thing, and from what I've been alluding to, is everybody's part of their own gang. You know what I'm saying? All these fraternities and sororities, they their own gang. So if you're not repping their gang, you on the outside. So they don't give a fuck about you. There's a certain mindset that once you go in there, that's why I mentioned these movies, uh, the fraternity movies of hazing. That's why you need to go watch old school, school days, skull, the skulls, because there's a hazing process. You come into these organizations with a certain type of mindset that they're going to mold you to their type of mindset. So once you pledge and walk your line and finally get your, your, your letterman jacket, you know what I'm saying? You're not thinking how you was before. You're thinking the way they want you to think. Mm -hmm. So my thing is like, with all these institutions in play, this is just another cog in the machine that uh, moves about in the agenda that the the high, the higher upper echelon people want you to move. Because on the on the low end, you don't see no real progress. You don't, and we from we from New York, so we ain't never seen none of these black fraternities and sororities. You know what I'm saying? Though, uh, if unless you went to Howard, and that's in D.C. You know what I'm saying? Then you would see black fraternities and all that stuff. I li we live in my I live in Florida now, and I live in Miami, so I see a lot of lodges mm -hmm. all over the place. That I was see, something I see them all over the place. That's not something we were seeing in Queens in New York. That was not a thing like that. You know what I'm saying? So now when we come down south, that's that's a thing. Mm -hmm. But it's a bunch of it's a bunch of uh, lodges around here. But the lodges I see. In, in the neighborhoods that they at. Not us. Not only that, shit is fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you talking about community and brotherhood and all this other colloquial terms and very empty words, because if you look at the progress, it's like certain people get the brotherhood. Certain people get the, the community help. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. 
So my point is that if you've been in the institution that's been around for a hundred years and nobody asks no questions, nobody asks like, well, what have y'all been doing? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Again, when I mentioned about Prince Hall Freemasonry, Buddy started the joint in 1784. Mm -hmm. We in 2024, if anybody in the chat can tell me if you heard of Prince Hall Freemasonry, then you lit. But I'm pretty sure y'all have. Mm -hmm. Like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Because now we're going to start asking some questions because it's like, what y'all been doing? Mm -hmm. And in the Black's Law Dictionary, I swear to God, this is from Black's Law. It says that usually having secret rights, meaning y'all doing your own thing behind closed doors. So that means that there's a mentality that you want to set in place. So when these people uh, uh, cross the line or whatever they call it, mm -hmm. once they go out into the real world, their mindset is already state uh, set a certain way that they're for their gang. Mm -hmm. okay? So they're going to do whatever they can do to benefit the gang. So if that means they're going to slime you, they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at the end result, ain't, ain't no progress on our end with these institutions and organizations that have been around for 100 years. Mm -hmm. If you ever look at your uh, Instagram feed, in November, in November, December, January, all you see is, oh, Founders Day, and you see everybody, AKAs, and everybody, ugh, uh, uh, all this other stuff, mm -hmm. which don't mean nothing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You stepping and doing stomp the yard shit, but what's it to? What's it for? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's my petty thought for this one. It's like, what's up with these black fraternities and sororities? I know I'm going to get flat on the rewatch, but I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm just asking questions. Y'all been around for a hundred and some years. Mm -hmm. we, got a fr we got a fraternity that has been around for damn near 200 some years. It's, and, and to add on to your point, you, you, you're you gonna hear from people that actually have done things in their community where they've done things for the last 20 years. And they, and they can show their proof by saying, Here's these pictures that we do for the community that we do this and we do that, right? Well, what impact has it really made on that particular community? Because if you affect your community, cool, right? You you can only do what you can do for your community, cool, right? But by and large, what effect has it really changed? It affect you, it affect the people who are in it, and it affect your life, it affect the connections to it, but what has it really changed? So I don't want to hear the exception to the rule. I don't want to hear from y'all about this. So when y'all y'all when on the rewatch, you're gonna hear people comment or see people comment like, oh, but we do this, but you're the exception to the rule. We're talking about the rule. The rule is by and large, everybody's not doing this. By and large, everybody that's in fraternities are not making the effective change in that neighborhood where that neighborhood if that fraternity wasn't there that the neighborhood would be even worse right and then uh, we're talking about black fraternities and sororities right so if you're doing good for the community and the community knows you're in the neighborhood then there should be no reason why say i don't want to get racial but there shouldn't be no reason why black kids are still dying correct because you're in the community right correct. you're Helping the community, right? right? Okay, we can't save everybody, but you can make sure it doesn't happen again because you're in, you have an organization that you could call somebody up, that could call another person up, that could get the top lawyer over here and, and get that 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 um get that police officer or get that person prosecuted to the full extent of the law because you're using your connections to benefit the community. But see, you you you're being honest, bro. But I'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm gonna add to your point. So to what you're saying, right? It shouldn't even have to come to that. And what I mean by that is this: based on what you're saying, if y'all really making an, a, a real change into your neighborhood and you're affecting the neighborhood, your mere presence alone should allow somebody not to jump out the window. I'm about to jump out the window. But I fear the backlash of, of, of these people that I got to answer to within the community. Just on your, on, your, on your mere presence. 
without even have to make a call, without having to, to, to really be like, if I do this, I got to really second guess myself. That's the, that's the change that we're talking about. Just your mere presence alone, you know, not to get crazy. That's like if you have a child and they're in the neighborhood and they're bugging out because you are the father and because who you are and the respect that you have of your neighborhood, somebody's going to call you and say, hey, man, your child out here is wilding out. Um, we, we're not going to get them in trouble, but you should know. So that way you can rectify the situation. But we're not going to touch this this child. Just by your mere presence alone. Right. To add to that, it's like if, like I said, eight of these institutions been around since the 1900s. The, uh, back to your point of the mere presence alone, you had a hundred years. Names should be ringing bells. Ringing all types of bells. That's why I say this is some gang shit because if you've been around for a hundred years and you go on the wrong gang block, you know you, you can't rep certain shit. You can't do certain things because y'all done put in the work already for, quote unquote, the community. Especially if you've been, y'all always hype about, oh, my my sorority and my fraternity been around here since 1908, 1906, 1913, 1911. Okay, so what you have y'all done for a hundred and some years? Is the name ringing bells? Name should have been, it should have been ringing. Should have been ringing. With the, the football teams that I played for growing up, and I and I got I got the you know I'm walking around with my equipment. I'm coming home from practice. Yo, you play for the Skyhawks? Name ringing right. bells. You know what I'm saying? Now I get old. I'm now I'm playing with the more better Jaguars. I I go to school with the more better Jaguar jacket with my name on it, my position, the letter in, my number. Yo, you play for more better? Ringing bells. So. You know what I'm saying? To your to your point, bro, the mere presence alone, it it it, sh it should be a domino effect. You had a hundred, a hundred. I'm what? not letting this shit go. You had a hundred plus years of putting in work, right? Mm -hmm. Putting people in positions to quote unquote uplift the community, right? Damn that you could it each each individual person that comes from a different state, different community, because now they're part of that organization, now they're part of that whole umbrella structure, they should be able to go back to their specific community and help out their community, correct? Or let me know if I'm bugging or if I'm overexerting myself with my Correct. Correct. You know correct. Now, I'm not saying you're supposed to help everybody. That's asinine. But if it's 1.5 million people in all these organizations, y'all should be able to touch, pause every community because you got enough people out there in all these different positions. You got doctors, lawyers, you, all these people. So there shouldn't be no reason that if I go to a certain hospital that it's the stigma if I go to that hospital for an earache, I'm going to lose a toe. There should be no reason why uh, there's this stigma of like, um, don't go to, you know what I'm saying? Don't go to this neighborhood and that neighborhood. Ah, ah, ah. There should be none of these stigmas because you had a hundred plus years to put in the work. To add on to your point, you know, I just had surgery, right? One of my teammates from the Skyhawks, he was one of my classmates. We grew up together. I've known this, this guy since we was eight years old. He's a, he's a very good friend. This was one of the, one of my day one bros since we was in the third grade. He's now one of the leading nurses in the one of the leading nurse and I don't even think he's really classified as a nurse anymore because he's up a echelon top tier where he's like the chairman of like all the nurses right mm. he's seen that I just had surgery he texts me bro whatever you need in the medical field whatever whatever hospital you at Whatever that's going on that you need answers to, that you need something moved right away, let me know. I, all I got to do is make a phone call. That's ringing bells, dog. And he's in New York. Putting but, in work. But, but, but they fly him all across the world because he's, he's the top tier. He's, he's that dude. So he told me, 
if you ha if you need any help with anything regarding your medical stuff, information, putting putting belts to ass, making sure that you get the proper care, the right care, let me know. And this is what, and this is what I'm talking about. This is just one person. Now, what if he's part of an organization they got hundred thousand other people? Now, the crazy thing is, he's a part of a, of a fraternity, correct? Right. So he's a part of a fraternity, and I'm pretty sure because he viewed me like a brother. Anybody he views like a brother, whether he played football with us, whether it's in the fraternity, they they do stuff for people all the time. So th these are the exceptions of the rule that I'm talking about. We we don't want we don't want to hear from that. We want to hear from the people that are in these same communities as where the 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 brothers got 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 caught up with the goon squad in Mississippi where they have they have several big name colleges in Mississippi. You have several top tier supposedly top tier uh uh. uh fraternities and sororities in the state of Mississippi. Why the mere presence alone of your fraternity and that chapter, because there's different chapters, and that chapter is not ringing bells where they where they don't feel comfortable instead of grabbing this man because he, 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 he broke a law and have him do process, you take him to this house and do all this weird shit. You asking you asking the right questions, my guy. You know what I'm saying? You asking the right questions because the end result is what worked again. I'm hundred plus years. If I had a business or anything that been around for hundred plus years, it's ringing bells. Just for it to be in in good standing, still around for a hundred years good or not it's still gonna ring bells bro my mother worked for supreme court for over 35 years when i was a little boy going up to supreme court when i walked into the building they said hey little boy who are you here to see i'm here to see miss i'm, I'm gonna say my mother's name miss Isetta johnson oh z yeah oh that's z son yeah go ahead go by bypass security all that stuff and at that time, when I saw going up to her job, like Dolo, I had to be about like eight-ish, nine-ish. And by that time, my mother already had put in 10 years. So 10 years at a job, her name is ringing bells at the Supreme Court of New York, the courts. You can't just walk into that building like, like and think it should have sweet. This is the Supreme Court of New York. And I'm walking in and say, yeah, I'm here to see my mother. Who's your mother? Isaiah Johnson. Oh, that's Z son. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, go ahead. Ringing bells. Mm -hmm. He's only been there for 35 years compared to the hundred and some years that you're talking about. And we're talking about multiple people. Multiple chapters and multiple institutions all over the country. Still to this day, I would get a phone call from you know one of my mom's conrads or pe somebody that she used to work with like hey if you need anything you know if you got something going on let me know da, 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 da. and that's in sheer respect of my mom's ring bells see what i'm saying when your resources got resources So I just wanted to add that on to your point, bro. My bad. Yeah. So that that's my petty thought for the night. You know what I'm saying? We could go on, but that's my that's my petty thought. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the next segment. Keep the lie live. Keep the lie live. Lie live. So this keep the lie live. Keep the lie live portion of the show. It's this misnomer that is just entertainment. All through the show, we've been talking about programming, skull and bones, the double meaning of these things that, that we're so used to in our everyday life is not just entertainment, it's programming. It's programming for us to do everything that we do in our everyday life. 
Same thing with the migrants that's coming through. These are adults. Adults can be programmed. They being programmed automatically by having new laws set for them, being able to have, you know, this and that. And now the programming starts. Right. So you take these people out or you move these people down and you bring these people in thinking that. And showing them images that, oh, we're better than this people, be, people that have been here because they don't want to work these jobs. They don't want to do what we're willing to do to 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 get to the next level when the people that are already here already been doing it. Mm -hmm. already, for generations on top of generations working the struggle jobs. But now here's the thing. The struggle jobs is not the ones that they're advertising. They're advertising the, the jobs that people will actually want. But these are not the jobs that they're advertising to us. See what I'm saying? That's how you knock off the structure. So it's not just entertainment when you watch something and you're like, damn, why did they randomly put that, oh, this cousin is attracted to this cousin? Or if you're in a scandal, then all you need to do is to do this and you does you don't have to face the consequences. There's a reason behind that. So it's never just entertainment that they're showing us so i want people to really be cognizant of the things that they watch like we talk about a movie on this on the show called blank check as an example blank check when i thought about blank check and when i watched it as a kid i'm like yo that was a dope movie and it's still a good movie but it's not a good movie meaning meaning behind that is because what they promote in the underlying message the underlying the message, because the movie is about scamming, right? But it's this 10-year-old kid that's doing the scam, right? He gets this money from a, a, a you know, a, a, a big-time robber. Big-time robber runs over his bike by accident, writes him a blank check. So the 10-year-old kid takes the check home, doctors it up a little bit, and put a million dollars on it. Went into the bank and got a million dollars for that check. Scamming, right? But in the course of the movie, he goes buy him a house. He goes get him a limo, a nice whip. He gets him a driver. He gets all the clothes he ever wanted. Get all the toys he ever wanted. Cool. So now this grown woman is like, yo, who's the new person that owns all this stuff? And that's his 10-year-old self. Like, yeah, th this is this is Mr. McIntosh's house. I mean, he's Mr. McIntosh. But she's mm -hmm. going on dates with him. Ain't never seen Macintosh a day in her life, but she going on dates with the 10-year-old boy. But at the end of the movie, where they promote pedophilia, what grown woman is going on dates with a 10-year-old boy where he's paying for dinner? He's driving her around in the limo. She eating ice cream. She playing in the rain in the in the park and shit. He, he 10 years old. He still got to take her out, pay for the meal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At 10 years old. At 10 years old, he's still doing the paying. <laughs> You feel yeah, bitch, you got a whole job. You can't you can't bust down a, a dollar or two? Yeah. God damn. She working at the bank, right? So <laughs> at the end of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> my fault, my fault. So that, that shit just have me die. So. <laughs> so at the end of this movie, she gives this young man a kiss on the lips. And not no pet kiss. But even as a pet, if a grown man if it was that, if that was in reverse, a grown man on a date with a ten year old girl that's crushing on him, and he kisses her on the lips, whether it's a peck or it was a sensual kiss, people lose their mind. But because it came out the time that it came out, and because it was a little boy getting a kiss from a grown woman, it wasn't that big of a deal because it wasn't a peck. She kissed him. She didn't slob him down, but she kissed. What, what Joker said? If if a gangbanger gets shot in the hood. Nobody bats an eye, but as soon as I say it, I'm gonna kill a mayor, now everybody loses their minds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so at the end of the day, like they showcasing this shit, and nobody said nothing. You read the script as an actress, you cool with kissing this 10-year-old boy. So oh, then it cool. so it so even even I forget if it was before or after the kiss, he was like, So so she was like, So you could come look for me. No, this was right before the kiss. She's like, you could come look for me in 10 years. He was like, how about five? And she was like, all right, I, 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 six years. 
you so still you, gonna be like 16. Correct, correct, bro. So you promoting why have that in the movie about scamming is the point that I'm making. Now, somebody had mentioned uh Operation Mockingbird. That's literally what it is, where it's like um it's a manipulating domestic and um, American news media organizations for propaganda purposes. You know what I'm saying? So the mm -hmm. upper echelon motherfuckers who's okaying mm -hmm. these uh, production houses and giving them money to produce the movie, I'm pretty sure they read the script was like, yeah, we're going to green like this. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Right. Because the producer ain't got the money to produce the movie. He got to go get the money from somebody else. Mm-hmm. So for him to get the money from somebody else, he got to produce the work and, and showcase the script. Like, yo, I want to write this movie about blank checks. It's about this little kid scamming. And you know what I'm saying? It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of dope. So they're like, all right, the only way we're going to green like this if you put this in the movie, take this out, put this in there. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. We're going to do it. So if the producer and director can get their name out, they're going to say whatever they got to do. They're going to do whatever they say mm -hmm. so they could get their name. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is the project that they got to do, get it out there. So now the next project, they can have a little bit more say so. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, not a lot, because you still got to go to them to get the bread. So why, so why in a movie about scamming, you put having a, a grown woman having a relationship going on dates with a 10 year old boy? It's programming. It's, pro, it's programming. It's cool. It's okay to have relationships. With little kids, he's a ten-year-old boy. Sexually, physically, what can a ten-year-old boy do for a thirty-year-old woman? Not a damn thing. But he taking, he picking her up, taking her on dates, and 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 paying, paying the dinner bill, taking. You know what I'm saying? They eating ice cream. She riding around in his limo. They they playing in the in the rain in the park and getting wet. <laughs> Like, yo, how you a grown woman and you still accept the fact that he going to pay for the dinner? Like, what? Come on, bro. Come and on, man. Mind you. And mind you, he's the one with the bag, right? But she don't know that. She think the person with the bag is his boss, is Mr. McIntosh. But you ain't meet Mr. McIntosh. You meet this little Nick. And, and what 10-year-old boy going to have a boss? Like... And not to give the way the movie chat, but y'all gonna see it. You an FBI agent, ma? Where's your FBI skill set? What ten year old boy you know got a boss? Where is your antennas? When, when you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on, yo? Not a parent, not a family figure, not a teacher, a boss at ten years old. Come on, ma. She ain't never meet near another one of his family not members. Near another, other, son. Not not a father, not a mother, near another. No other, no other adult, but you know what I'm saying, the driver. Right. But when we know what he there to do, he there to drive. Right. So at the end of the day, it's programming. It's not just entertainment. Be mindful of what you're watching and be cognizant of why they're showing you this. Why? Why put this in the script? And that's just one of the movies. The movie that he did before that I mentioned tonight called Mikey. There's a scene in the movie. I may, I'm may i not telling y'all the movie, but there's a scene in the movie where he kisses another girl who's a grown-ass woman in the movie. And she had to get on her knees and kiss him. And there's other parts in the movie that's inappropriate for a 10-year-old little boy to be doing scenes with grown women. I'm, I'm not going to tell y'all the rest of the movie. Y'all got to go see the movie. Got to go see the movie. So, again, it's not just entertainment. So, that's my Keep the Lie Live portion of this show. All right. Anything you want to add before we, you know what I'm saying, get up out of here? Uh, chat, if y'all ever get a chance to read a book, you got to read a book by Edward Bernays called Propaganda. He is the father of propaganda. He is the reason why people think part of a complete breakfast is eating bacon and eggs. That's the, that's the worst meal you can have, especially. But he created that ideology 
that psychological subversion to make you think a part of a complete breakfast is eating bacon and eggs. So get your book, Edward Bernays, Propaganda, and you're going to see why. You know what I'm saying? And again, it's not just entertainment, right? Uh -huh. So so if he know that, the world know that, why do they keep promoting it? Because they already created a product that's going to make billions of dollars. Bacon, the sale of bacon makes billions of dollars. They say, oh, I got a better play. And that's one of the worst things you could put in your body. So, yeah, so y'all. He this and that play. He this and that yeah. play. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got a better play. <laughs> I, you call the plays that I love, coach. You know what I'm saying? You just want to do your chip and dip commercials. <laughs> I'm with you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you, coach. You You're know? an offensive coordinator, Crozier. <laughs> Keep your, your mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? He's the, oh man! He's the plays you call that I love. You know what I'm saying? So yo, we just quote any given Sunday. That's another movie I gotta go see. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can get in tune. You heard? That's a fact. Y'all want to shout out the sponsors of the show: Bravo Section, Button Snaps, and OUV Records. If you're interested in becoming one of the sponsors of the show, you can hit me up on Instagram at Ashley Lovechild. Again, at Ashley Lovechild, or you can hit my brother up on Instagram at Bravo section underscore. Go holla at me there. You know what I'm saying? One more time. It's Bravo section underscore. So, y'all, we thank y'all for tuning in to episode 41. Episode 41. That's crazy for this Thursday night episode. Of course, we're going to be back on Sunday at 1030. Make sure you tap in. Hit that like button. And, you know, throw the comments in there. We love to interact with you guys. Whether you agree with us or not, it's not about changing your mind. It's about broadening your perspective. Your perspective, and uh, well, my dude, cooking right there. I was you put some spice on that joint. Oh, it's not sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, little little herbs and seasoning over there, kid. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. But make sure y'all tap in episode 42. And again, we're trying to get over to 5,000 subscribers for the channel. And again, that next episode where we show that we're over 5,000, we're going to give some free uh, merchandise to you, some quality, dope, top-tier merchandise that we origin well, that we sell that we're um, going to do some giveaways. So please, um, again, continue to subscribe and support us. And again, on the rewatch, tap into our clips, our shorts, and the rewatches and comment. You know, we love to... Uh, we just love to see it. It's, it's, it's great for conversations. So, again, we love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in and supporting us. We'll see y'all on Sunday. It's love. Yes,